If I can have everyone's attention, please, if we can quiet down. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, if you would, please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate. And if you have to take a call, please step outside. At this time, I'd like to call the Indian Trail Town Council meeting Tuesday, January 9th, 2018, into session. If everyone please rise for our Pledge of Allegiance. Chief, would you lead us? I will. I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would please remain standing for our moment of silence. Thank you. <coughs> and also, uh, today is National Law Enforcement Officers Day, if we'd all recognize our deputies that are in here and thank them for their service and those out and about. At this time, is there any additions or deletions to our agenda? Mr. Cohn? Um, I'd like to add 5A, Christmas float recognition. Uh, you want to put that as 5D since we have three? I can move it to A and move everything else down, or do you want it as 5D? D's fine. D's already there. D's fine. That's fine. OK. OK, anything else? Yeah, if, if you would remove 9A2. 9A2. Okay. And remove 9C2. 9C2. Mm -hmm. And also remove 10A Plyler to be discussed during public hearing. Right. To be discussed during public hearing during 9A. 10 a, 10, 10 a, 10 a, 10 a. Okay. No, move 10 a to be discussed under gonna, 9 we're gonna, a. We're going to take it off. We're just going to take it off. Take it okay. Off. Question: We came here first to hear those items. Where are you taking them off? The uh, the plyler will be discussed under a public hearing, and there will be a session specifically for you to comment on. It is not required to be a separate item on the agenda. Nine A two is. Would council like to answer that, or would you like me to answer, Mr. Sadik? Nine A two is completely pulled out by the client. Thank you, sir. That was the the the, 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 okay. the client made the request to pull it out. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other additions or deletions? If none, I need a motion to approve the amended agenda, please. So oh. moved. Ms. Cohn's made the motion. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion passes. This time we go to presentations, which is item A, our Veterans Memorial. Uh, Mr. Sadik, I yield the floor to you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, waiting for Michael to pull it on the screen. What you're looking on the screen is what we, uh, we've been working with the VFW on a veterans memorial to be constructed in the open space in front of this building. So this is a conceptual design that's been done by staff and uh, simply uh, we're doing that to be able to cost it, to come up with a cost estimate. After we come up with a cost estimate, uh, then we present it back before council and uh, working closely with the VFW and some other uh, agencies in town. So if they approve it, uh, we will go ahead and start preparing to build it out there. 
Simply what you're looking at is a concept that matches exactly the building exterior from uh, the bolsters to the brick to the caps. And uh, we will be putting uh, all the flagpoles for the, fi uh, for the five services, including the U.S. and North, North Carolina flag. And around this area out there, we will be doing a lot of landscaping uh, to complement uh, uh, the veteran memorial. Uh, the, the second clip, it will show sort of the material that we, we're going to be utilizing. We have not gotten into the lighting yet and the plaques and, and the name of the veterans, so all that comes mm -hmm. afterward. Uh, but uh, what we're showing right there, it does match exactly the building exper uh, exteriors that we have for uh, Town Hall. Um, as soon as we get approval, we'll move into uh, detailed drawings. We submit them to Union County for approval, if it's approved, and we do have a council uh, adopt a certain budget for the project, we'll go ahead and construct it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. City. That moves us to item B, Crooked Creek ADA Playground and Splash Pad. Mr. Tryon. Uh, hey, Jason, I yield the floor to you, sir. Good evening, Council and Mayor. I'm just going to have a couple slides to show you with updates on the current projects at Crooked Creek Park. The first slide you see in front of you is what's been done so far, the progress for the splash pad. The splash pad at the park will have a variety of above ground and below ground elements. Um, the progress so far has come along really well. We are looking to be done here in about five to six weeks. We have all of the structures for the splash pad complete. They are working on finishing up the pump house right now. And then once they get that in place, we'll finish with additional surrounding furnishings, including picnic tables, benches, trash cans, and a shade structure. Uh, the next slide just kind of breaks down another angle of the same elements. Um, the great thing about the two projects that we're looking at, this one being the first one, is that they are both funded through grants. This is the last element of the Pardeth grant that we were received. So the other three elements that are already completed are the disc golf course, the outdoor fitness equipment, and the walking trails. So once we wrap up this project, that'll conclude that grant, and then we'll be able to uh, file for the reimbursement. The next project is the accessible playground that's going on the other side of Crooked Creek Park. If you've been out there, you've seen a lot of progress on that as well. Um, similar timeline to this project, most of all of the structure for the playground has been installed so far. The contractor is working on putting in some shade structures that are actually a part of the playground, and then they'll come back and do the, the surfacing in the next few weeks. Lost a little bit of time with the cold weather. The ground was frozen. They could not work, but they should be wrapped up here in the next few weeks. Um, and then we'll plan a ribbon cutting for that. And then this next slide, same project or same area like this with the other one is funded through a grant. Um, so that gives you the breakdown of what our contribution was as opposed to the grant funds that we got from the state. Any questions? If I may add, Mr. Mayor, that uh, we, w we will not open the ADA playground until we provide the ADA walk to the restrooms, which is a connection that is needed. So we will tape it until uh, that part of the project is completed, then we'll open it for service. Thank you. I have a quick question. I, I guess uh, on the splash pad, <coughs> I was looking at it. I'm just assuming the water's going to run, you're going to have something for the water to run off into, because I kind of thought it would be more of a, the water would stay inside of so it. So the splash it. pad, all the water drains to a center drain. So there'll be no water that'll leave the current concrete pad that you see. We'll have uh, ground around that that's going to be grass and different types of furnishings around that. But everything in there, there's a <coughs> slight slope to it, and all the water will drain it to the center. It slopes towards, looking at that picture, it looked like it was it yeah. would float off. So I guess yeah, it'll it, all it, slope to the center. center. Um, there's a, a big white, you can see it if the picture with the raccoon on the right, um, that's the drain right there. That white right there is going to be the drain. Gotcha. Any other questions? Thank you, Jason. Good job. Brings us to item C, audit and economic efficiency. Mr. Wadowitz, Mr. Sadek, who's going to take the floor? Jim. Evening, Jim. <coughs> good evening. Um, it's good to be before you tonight. Welcome back, Shirley David. Welcome to the new members. I look forward to working with you. 
Um, Patrick and I wanted to give you an update on our certified independent audit um, for the year ended June 30th, 2017. Um, the field work was completed on, in 11. So do you want me to start, Patrick? Go ahead, please, sir. It's all yours. Uh, and some basic information first. Um, based on the Local Government Budget and Control Act, we, our town is required to have a certified audit. Um, our auditors are uh, J.B. Watson and Company out of Wadesboro. We had done an RFP in the spring of 2016, so they have a three-year contract. Um, very pleased with them. They're tough, thorough, but they're very fair as well. Um, I've been through a lot of these, and I like working with them a lot. Um, basically, what the audit ensures that our financial information was presented fairly. In addition to that, that our internal controls are working properly. So both these things are done. Our audit received an unqualified opinion. This is considered a clean opinion, and it's the best type of report you can receive from the auditors. At this time, I'd be remit if I didn't uh, thank my staff, the two Alicia's and uh, Rosemary. Mm. I feel I'm very blessed. Um, they're really good. By the time I get it, by the time Patrick gets it, information's really in good shape. Uh, now, briefly to the slide. Our net position. Net position is defined basically as the difference between our assets and our liabilities. Um, we have a $56 million net positive position. Um, basically, we have about $75 million in assets. Uh, basically, we have $23 million in cash, uh, about $46 million in infrastructure and net capital assets, and about $17 million in liabilities. Most of that is debt service, and I'll go over that in a minute. Um, fund balance. Fund balance is defined as a surplus from our excess revenues over expenses, and this is accumulated from year to year. Fund balance uh, based on gap, generally accepted accounting principles, is broken down basically into five different categories, from unspendable to restricted. Now restricted, just a minute on that. Patrick and I were talking about this earlier. Restricted, it's cash in the bank, but it's only for certain projects. For example, bond money for streets. That money can only be used for streets. And um, I'll spend a little bit on that. And it's, but we have unassigned available, this is the valuable, 11.3 million. Of course, it requires town board approval. But that means it's unassigned. I mean, it's available fund balance if needed. So it's the first thing when Moody's walks in, first thing they ask is, what's your unavailable, what's your unavailable, what's your unassigned available fund balance? So it's very important for a rating. Um, our restricted portion, as the chart reflects, um, shows that we have a decrease of $4.5 million. This was expected. This was the money that was in the bond that paid for the building we're in today. Uh, enough on fund balance. ABC contribution was mentioned in the audit. We received $163,000 from them. We are working with them now, currently trying to ensure that we get um, what we think is fair, 100% of their net profits. Next is debt service. Uh, we currently have six outstanding debt issues. At uh, July of 2017, as we began the year, we had 15 million in outstanding debt. You see on that chart there on the bottom, the original loans, current balance, and the final payment year. That one is a typo. That should be 23. So basically we have, in addition to that, we have, so it's 15.5 million, and this is part of that liability that was part of the, up above, the uh, net position. And so very few liabilities except for the debt. Uh, we currently have 1.85 million in the bank. This is money that was borrowed for the 2013 street bond <coughs> on the bottom that has not been spent yet. Um, so 1.3 million of that is for streets and sidewalks, and 500,000 is earmarked for Old Monroe Road. Somehow we took that money down, and the 500 that sits in the bank, and that's considered restricted fund balance, that 1.850 million. In addition, we have authorized but not yet taken down or borrowed 2.5 million for streets, 2.5 million for parks, has to be used for Crooked Creek or Chestnut. We had the attorney check on that for us because we thought about a different strategy. And then 9.5 for Old Monroe Road. Now this runs out, it'll be seven years, believe it or not, 11 of 18. If we uh, take an action, we can get another three-year extended if we wanted to. Uh, we are, again, proud of our Moody's rating, A1 rating, top 9% in the country. And this corresponds, this corresponds to better interest rates for residents. 
Lastly, I just wanted to touch on our stormwater fund. This is considered an enterprise fund. Enterprise fund is basically defined as it provides services to the public for a fee. It's a standalone fund. Um, you can only spend whatever the revenue stream brings in. Our fund balance in this fund stands at 2.4 million, healthy. Um, our rates were increased this year for the first time. Most, tax, most residents saw a $10.62 rate increase. And uh, I checked with the tax receiver. She had not one person called to complain. So I felt good about that. Um, just to give you a point, so it's $53 for the average homeowner. For a uh, commercial, it's basically $40.56 per ERU, equivalent residential unit. For example, Walmart, it's based on impervious paved uh, areas. Walmart has 400 ERUs. Their stormwater bill for 2016-17 was 16,000. So, uh, just we wanted to give you, Patrick. Do you want to add anything? Uh, we just wanted to give you a brief update on it. Um, thank you for letting us present. And again, we look forward. Well, thank you, Jim. I don't have anything to add, Mr. Mayor or Council, unless you have any questions. Mr. Carr. Quick question: uh, the the nine million five hundred thousand for Monroe Road. Obviously, I think you had mentioned that we've used five hundred thousand oh, dollars. We have in the bank, David. Okay, we have in the bank. And we took it down. We haven't used it yet. But okay, it's uh, available. It's a uh, restricted fund balance. It's part and, of the and why why particularly did we did we put it off to the side in the bank? Is that I'm just not for sure. us? For some reason, at the time um, in two thousand thirteen, they decided to take that five hundred thousand down. Maybe they thought for design money, but it hasn't been spent yet. So it sits there, and uh, we have to the end of uh, November of 18 to take an action on the remaining 9-5 to extend that for three years. So the, the chances are we'll just extend that for, for three more years until they start <laughs> building the road. Is that correct? Or Excuse me? I said the, the 9.5 million, we're probably not going to use that before 2018, I wouldn't think. No, no, but we I have agree. to take an action to extend the Exactly. So, so what we're going to do is have it extended three more years if yes. I'm... That's and we can do, is, is there a limit to how many times you can extend? That's it. I think That's it. 10 That's years. The, you, have to, you have to have taken the money down, otherwise we lose the authorization. Gotcha. Thank you. We checked on that. Any other questions? No? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. You're good. Welcome aboard, everyone. Thank you, Jim. Great. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Jim. That brings us to item D under presentation, the Christmas parade. Mr. Cohen, you added that, but who are we yielding to? Mr. Seder? I'm sorry? The item D presentation from the Christmas parade. The Christmas parade. Who's going to try? Yes, uh, uh, Jason. Jay. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who attended the Christmas parade uh, that was uh, held December third of last month. Uh, we had seventy-five entries all together. Uh, some of those entries had multiple floats. Uh, we thought it was a great success. Um, just a couple thank yous. The Union West Rotary was gracious enough to assist with lining up the parade again this year, as well as the Lions Club of Indian Trail assisted with judging the parade. Uh, of those 75 entries, we have four categories that the Lions Club chose four winners. Uh, they were most creative, best youth, best business, and best use of red and green. Uh, we have four awards to present tonight. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go through who won them, uh, invite all four to come up, take a, a group picture, uh, and then if we would like to take some separate photos, we'll uh, venture downstairs. Uh, Indian Trail United Methodist Church won Most Creative. Union Prep uh, won Best Youth. Lanty Music won Best Business. And the Girl Scout Troop 3819 and Mission Friends won Best Use of Red and Green. Uh, again, these were folks that went above and beyond decorating their floats. Uh, so at this time, uh, if all four of those groups would like to come up for a picture, that would be great.
Hey, how you doing? If we get the, the young ladies maybe to here to move uh, up front and center and do two lines. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> Yeah, we can photobomb them. <laughs> Shirley, jump up and photobomb them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Any photos of the floats? What was that? Did you have any photos of the floats? So we do have photos of the floats. They were all posted to our Facebook page. Okay. Uh, we do not have any photos for this evening's presentation, but we can definitely email you the winners if you would so like. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you Hayden. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that brings us to public comments. Please be advised that these meetings are recorded and now videoed. Uh, please be respectful to the speakers. Council is not to respond to the speakers. You have three minutes. Please keep your comments focused, and any adverse comments will end your three minutes. Our first speaker is Thomas Musoni. State your name and who you represent or where you live. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council, thank you for having me. My name is Thomas Musoni. In 1990, I made a cold call to AutoBell to help them with their real estate. 27 years later, more than 50 car washes is going pretty well. Charlotte to Maryland. We have statewide five locations that are being affected by this super street. They are detrimental to our business. We invested over $2 million and then bought the lot next door. And had we known the super street was coming, we would have given serious thought to coming here, paying taxes, creating jobs, and serving the residents of the area. We're very active in supporting the community. We try to do a good job. We hope we present well. We've never closed a location in 49 years of business. But this super street is just catastrophic. And so I think there's gonna be a proclamation later on, but I'm asking you to um, thoughtfully consider opposing this wholeheartedly. I also have a project that I developed on Providence Road at 485, right in front of the golf course. And, and in my years at Crosland and serving on the Charlotte Chamber and actually making the motion to take the vote to the voters of Charlotte for the light rail. I've got a lot of transportation experience and I know that the squeaky wheel, wheel, a steel or rubber, gets the grease. So I urge you folks to protect the businesses in the area and help us remain vibrant and oppose the super street. On that project on Providence Road, they did just that. My old company, Crosland, and Childers Klein and Johnny Harris behind us raised enough awareness to the detrimental aspects of the super street that they were able to get it relocated, taken off the table for that intersection. Now it's a, it's a nightmare, but there are better solutions. The super street has applications on 27 in Locust, on Highway 55 in Apex, in rural situations at higher speed limits where U-turns are plausible with signalization, far off in the distance. But in urban situations, it's never been proven in the state of North Carolina. Cookout Restaurant, for instance, has six locations, and they're considering closing some of them. This is massive and impactful. 
During the recession, 30 seconds. Thank Second. you. During the recession, we employ a, a target market that has a 50% unemployment rate. It's harder for us during great times to find employees, but nonetheless, we provide a valuable service for kids who don't want to flip hamburgers or sell clothing or something else. So I ask of you to reconsider the super street and oppose it as much as you can. Thank you so much. Mayor. Go ahead, question for Patrick. Um, Patrick, the super street in the, uh, or just a four lane, would, would it take just as much up the four lane as the super street in that specific, or do you even know? If, if you take the entire corridor, it will serve the same purpose and capacity wise. So, because it was under my impression that the four lane was just as wide as the super street. It, it, it is. Okay. The, right. the, the lanes will be the same width. Uh, uh, the difference between the two is the signalized intersection that gives you access all the way around the intersection. But in regard to capacity, number of vehicles, average daily traffic per day, it should serve the same purpose. What, what I'm saying is when we build the boulevard or the super street versus the two lane, you, you're almost doubling the capacity. So uh, the only difference between the two is the U-turn that you're keeping more vehicles in those left turn lanes that will not impact the through lane. So to answer your question, council member, the capacity will be the same between the two. Gotcha. Thank you. The right of way is different. Thank you. Ms. Beverly Jones. <coughs> Welcome, man. Good Happy New Year to you. Beverly Jones, 5102 Old Charlotte Highway. I would like a current status of the Monroe Road Super Street Unified Resolution. The second thing I would like to address to the council is there an open ban on burning trash within the city limits of Indian Trail? And the last item is, do we have an ordinance against or for a certain date to take down Christmas decorations? Because there are some businesses and residential property owners that still have Christmas decorations up. Um, real quick. Ms. Jones, there is an open ban for fire. Once we started the recycling program, we had to put an ordinance in effect. And um, as far as the Christmas decorations, a lot of people keep them up past the 7th of January for Three Kings Day which is the official end of the Christmas season for them. And the weather's been quite cold the last few days to get the direct decorations down. I believe the people would have froze to them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lucy Henson. If you care, you can mention all the names. Hello, my name's Lucy Henson. This is Robin Jackson and this is Nicole Christie. We're running for the 2018 Students of the Year for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. This is a seven-week competition between students across the Charlotte area to raise, a, to raise money to find a cure for leukemia and lymphoma blood cancers. We all go to Porter Ridge High School. We're in 10th, she's in 11th. My cousin, Levi Vetter, was diagnosed at age three with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. He, um, it's kind of hard to explain the bond I have with him. He was... <laughs> I know, so it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with. And that's why we're running for this campaign. Our goal is $50,000, and that's where we might need, we're going to need some help to raise that money. We have a, Highway 55 this Saturday is doing from 1 to 4, is giving us 10% of anything they own. I mean, anything they make. Mia Familia, February 13th, is doing all day, however much they make, they give us 15%. And I'm a figure skater at Extreme Ice Center, and we're doing an ice show February 10th at six, from 6 to 7 p.m., and all the proceeds from that will go to our campaign. But if you know anyone that has any auction items or a business that would like to contribute and help us, that would be awesome. And if we could get some people to help share our page and um, our websites for donations, that would be great, too. Sponsor. The sponsorship. Oh yeah, and if you know any businesses that would like to sponsor as well, that would be awesome. And we are, the gala is coming up February 20, 23rd, and it's a Friday night, and we 
there's a thousand dollars per table. Uh, so and a table seats ten, so that would be more like a hundred dollars per ticket. And um, anything, any, if how many tables we sell, we get that money. So like, if we sell like ten tables, we'll get ten thousand dollars because they're a thousand each. So if anyone would like to buy a ticket or contribute to a table, that'd be great. Also, if you get the table, you get to put like your. If like a business bought the table, they get to put their name on the table. So you can like represent your business there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this time I'll close public comments and open the law enforcement update. Captain Coble. Take center stage, sir. So I got a couple a couple of slides here in a few minutes that Michael help us with, but first off I just wanted to uh go over a couple of stats from December. Um, I want to start off with a, uh, with a bad note. I don't know how many people on council or in the audience noticed or saw on the news, but he actually had a, uh, a deputy sheriff with Douglas County, Colorado, who was killed on December 31st in the line of duty that grew up in this area. Mm -hmm. He attended Weddington Middle School and also attended uh, Metrolina Christian Academy over here off Fairview and the Trail Road right across the highway. So. Just ask that everybody that he's got a lot of friends that are still in this area that he grew up with, coaches and things like that. So just keep that in mind and be keeping those, those friends and family in your thoughts and prayers. During uh, the month of December, we stayed pretty busy, not as cold as what we were so far this year in January. But uh, we had 415 traffic stops conducted in Indian Trail in December. 1,872 preventative patrols were logged in. Uh, 304 reports were taken. 255 business checks were logged in during the month of December. Uh, we currently are already working on the uh, budget for next year with Union County, and part of that process will be that I'll be meeting with the uh, with the county finance folks, and obviously doing my due diligence to make sure that we can keep our contract cost at the uh, at the best rate that we can possibly provide to the town. So Patrick and I talked about that a little bit the other day, and I'll be hopefully whenever we get those early numbers, we'll be trying to get those to him and Jim early enough in your budget planning season for, uh, for February and March and stuff. Um, our yearly in-service training's already begun. The guys are already sitting over there having to uh, get out of the cars, get in the office, do some online in-service training. Right now they're doing blood-borne pathogens, but throughout the year it'll be a lot of different stuff. Um, our contract amendment, so some of you guys that are new on council, uh, to catch you up to speed this past year during the budget session, we talked about uh, doing a reclassification of two of our personnel from a deputy sheriff position to sergeant position. And we did that so that we could keep our, our uh, workflow going in pre preparations for future growth. Right now, and you'll see on charts here in a few minutes, kind of how our workload's going, but we want to take it. We think now in the past year or so and in the next year or so is going to be a real good time to start getting that span of control set in place for future growth so that whenever we have to add on another position into our operation up here, that we're adding on from the bottom rather than try to add on from the middle of the ranks um, as far as supervisory positions. We've had to do that kind of sporadically, kind of like shooting, you know, shooting inside of a barn with a shotgun from 100 yards away in the past <laughs> few years. And so we're, we've uh, got that in the budget already to where we were looking at doing that around October, but we also felt that it was more important to wait till you guys got seated here so that you'd have an opportunity to on, on our uh, contract between the county, the sheriff, and Indian Trail to weigh in and have, have some say in on that. So. That is in the workflow process with Union County, so as soon as I get that, I'll be bringing that forth to Patrick and be sending that out to all you guys to look over. There again, it's not adding two positions, it's just reclassification of two current positions that we have right now. Um, the Hargett House is what we call it, Old Monroe Road. Um, I've talked about that before in past meetings. We did a nuisance <coughs> abatement there. We had a hearing on uh, January the 4th. On the 3rd, we, we had Superior Court scheduled and it, it started on the uh, 4th the morning of, and just before it started, all the attorneys got together and decided that they uh, wanted to come up with a resolution without the uh, judge having to intervene in it. So pretty much where we're at right now with that old Monroe Road property uh, there just before you get right past Ray Killo's farm and just before you get to, uh, to Brandon Oaks Parkway is, is that there's been an outside third party buyer that has stepped up and made a, a third offer now on the property. And the court has mandated that he sell half of that property. Um, and then the other half of the property they're going to allow him to retain 
However, they're giving him 120 days to get that code compliant, meaning all the garbage has to be removed, uh, the septic system has to be inspected by Union County Environmental Health, uh, the building and the structure itself has to be inspected, Union, uh, Indian Trail Code Enforcement had to go out do an inspection on it, but I think that was a win-win because it gave that gentleman an opportunity to re retain his property without us coming in there and just fully taking all of it. It actually gave him a few dollars in his pocket from the sale of half of his property to to clean up and fix up part of it if he'll do what they're asking him to do. And then the, the buyer of the uh, half of the property that caught fire here recently has already indicated as soon as the close of the sale that they plan on bulldozing and cleaning that property off and just making that nothing but a grass lot. So that hopefully will reduce the pain that has been on the EMS, us, uh, fire marshal's office, fire department, and everybody else, code enforcement, everybody that's been having to go over there over and over. And that place was getting to be a haven for uh, criminal activity for everybody. So um, I'll leave those with you guys, the, the stats for the December through uh, April of last year. And just so everybody's on the same page with that chart that's on the back of that paper I gave you, April is when we divided the town up into two zones. So I started tracking from April forward on these response times and stuff. But Mike, if you'll, uh, everybody's got the calls for service up there. So it shows 2017, our total calls for service here in town, 12,475. You can kind of see the uptick. Had a little bit of decline between 12 and 13, but kind of going back up on that. I'll just let you scroll through these real quick. And then self-initiated activity, same way back up to 25,078. That can be anything, traffic stops, preventive patrols, business checks, anything that, that our guys log in that they're actually, you know, pushing the button on the computer that they're doing. And so that kind of varies from time to time depending on what the call volume is and what kind of caseload they've got at the time. Reported incidents, 3627, up from 3227. <coughs> so that's kind of just continuing to be an uptick since 2010, just tracking that out. Average response time, I was pretty happy with this. You know, you've all heard me say in the past year that I don't put a whole lot of value in to the response time part of it because it doesn't take but one call for service that can throw that off greatly. So we've been scrutinizing these response time reports a whole lot heavier looking for anything outside the norm uh, within that. So you're talking about going through, you know, 800 or, or 900 lines on a, on a graph there trying to make sure that everything kind of looks like it falls into the ballpark. But... So far, the, uh, everything looked good after we adjusted January's of last year. And 918, you know, we were real proud of getting back down into a, what we feel like is a good, comfortable range. Average on scene time, what this is in a nutshell is, is that when, when Anthony back here behind me gets to your house, he's not in a hurry whenever it's, he's not waiting on another call. So that means that's the average amount of time that he can devote to investigating a break-in, investigating a complaint, a neighborhood nuisance, anything like that. So. Some calls these guys clear in five minutes, some calls take three hours. So the average amount of time though we like to see give a, a good amount of time so that I don't get there and say, hey David, I need to get your information real quick because I'm on the way to Shirley's house. Um, it's been like that up here in the past before and nobody likes that because you want to tell me all the problems that you got with the other neighbor Mike down here and I don't get that time to, to listen to those things. So, you know, when we can devote, and we're out here, we're frontlining, we're facing your town. So when we can devote that time to our residents, there, it's a good thing. And then I'll let uh, Chief Life step up here and talk to you guys about a, a weekend incident from this past weekend. Has anybody got any questions for me before Johnny gets up? Thank you, guys. Thank you. You need that. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Chase called me today and asked me to come speak. We, I know several of you live in Bonterra. Uh, a lot of activity on social media over the weekend reference to smoke and whatnot in the area. We had a brush fire that started uh, in some of the future phases of the Bon Terra subdivision. And that, that property is located off Faye Church between Indian Trail Fairview and the Bon Terra subdivision. Uh, the, the, the fire started, or we received a call around 3.15 on Saturday. There's a couple of pictures of it. All said and, and done, we burned 78 acres in there on Saturday. So um, this is an ongoing problem in that area. There's, there's about um, 430 something acres in that area in there, several different landowners. But uh, the Bonterra Walton Group, I think they got about 170 or so acres in there left to, to develop. 
and this is an ongoing problem. What it is is there's trails in there, so kids are back there walking those trails. That's how the fires are started. And last year over the summer, I think we were in there like 15 times, anywhere from five to 20 acres at a time every time. This backs up the Moser Circle off Fay Church Road. So this fire right here burnt pretty close up the property lines, you know, for structures. Um, and the way that works, it, we left it burning. So basically what we do is we go in with a bulldozer. We have forestry service bring in a dozer. It comes from Mount Holly. So you know what kind of response time that takes. So we were out there till like 9 o'clock Saturday night um, trying to get those lines plowed in around the fire. So they plow a line around the fire with a bulldozer, and then we just let everything in the middle burn. So that's what a lot of the complaints were. Prior to that, I think they were doing some burning over there for land clearing, and I think that was part of the delay in us getting a call because most of the folks just associated that smoke with the, the land clearing operations going on on the phase of Bonterra. I'm sure you could probably speak to that. You're smelling it at your house. I saw it, and that's exactly what I thought it was. I, th yeah. I thought they were burning wood piles. And, and so I think that's what that created a little bit of a delay in the response time and allowed the fire, as, as dry as it is, to, uh, to grow to that size. And 70, 78 acres is a pretty, pretty good size wood spire for Indian Trail. That might be the last spot we got to we could do that in and not have too much trouble. So um, again, that, that was Hemby Bridge. Unionville came in to help us with a brush truck, Bakers, and of course, North Carolina Forestry Service. So um, anything we can do in those areas to get the word out, and of course, nobody, nobody knows how it started, nobody's seen anything. Or, so anything we can do to get the word out in that area to try to slow some of this down, I know, uh, Bonterra's got some social media sites and so forth. Um, Might be a good, good avenue to do that. I'm not saying that the kids are coming from Bonterra because they come from all sides, trust me. Well, we're in there and they're walking all through. So, um, so it's just keep your eye out. And certainly we want to get this under control before we burn somebody's house. Do you have any suggestions on uh, how to keep this from reoccurring? There's really not a good way. Because like I said, there's, there's kids on all sides of that. There's, there's Bent Creek, you know, there's Moser Circle, there's Bonterra, Annandale. All of those kids are traveling back and forth through those woods. So it's, it's almost impossible to keep them out of there. And, and no doubt, I mean, they have bridges and covered bridges and places that they, you know, go hang out back there. Um, is, is the property posted? No, it belongs to the Bonterra Homeowners Association. It is their green space. And if Bonterra and trails Anna that go all back through there for people to walk and run and right. ride horses. It's like a nature trail. Right. So they built bridges nice. in there over the creeks. I mean, it's, it's really nice, but, you know, there's no way to stop that transient traffic coming through there unless we could get Chase out there on his motorcycle. <laughs> you know, did, I, uh, did the I don't Boy have Scout good camp get, get – did, how close did it get to that? No, no, it was on it was on the Fay Church roadside this time. They didn't didn't burn any of the buildings at the Boy Scout camp. Not this time. They yeah. have. Yeah, and that was exactly where my house sits. I I, I saw the saw the smoke, mm -hmm. and it looked just like the smoke that was coming from when they you know piled their wood up down there and and, and burn it on purpose. Yeah. And I I just assumed that's what it was. I think a lot of people, like you said, right. assumed it was the same thing. Right. And 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 I think that's what caused the, the delay and to let the fire get as big as it got was most folks just assumed it was that control work. Well, thank you, Johnny. I, I'm glad you said that. I, I didn't know until right now what, what, what really happened. So Thanks. thank you. <clears throat> okay, that brings us to the consent agenda. I need a motion. So moved. Ms. Howells made the motion to approve. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion approved. Brings us to public hearings A, conditional zoning. Item 1, CZ 2014-005M. Plyler Homes Ordinance Modification, Ordinance Number 275. Um, Rocks. Yes. 
I yield the floor to you, sir. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Thank you for uh, allowing us to present this case. This is gonna, we're going to do the presentations here from uh, the table at WAVE. Uh, members of the public wish to provide comments or the de uh, developers represented. We can all have a conversation together. Um, and so uh, this evening we're going to present uh, conditional zoning case 2014-005M. This is a modification to the previously approved Plyler Townhomes uh, conditional zoning. Just give you a background. Uh, this project was previously approved in uh, June of 2015. The subject property is a wooded site, roughly six and a half acres in size, and it contemplated 35 townhome units. Kind of a snapshot of the modifications. Uh, the biggest one was uh, the previous project was an alley loaded type project, uh, and the uh, applicant has requested to remove the alleys and replace them with front driveways, uh, providing access to the units. A second uh, element to the, to the modification is increasing the unit count from 35 units to 41 units. This results in a density increase from 5.4 units per acre to 6.3, and there's other minor associated changes. Now, just to make sure everyone's on the same page regarding location, the subject property is outlined in, in red color there, directly fronting on Plyler Road. The property is, again, six and a half acres between uh, Unionville Indian Trail Road and US 74. It's directly adjacent to the Cranston Crossings neighborhood and directly across uh, the street from Ridgefield Phase 2. So this is the original plan that was approved by Council in June of uh, 2015. Again, six and a half acres, 35 townhomes, and uh, access to the individual units provided by a rear alleyway system. Now the proposed modifications, again, still six and a half acres, but the unit in, uh, count has increased to 41 units, and you uh, now no longer have rear alleyways, you just have bigger rear yards, and access provided to the units through uh, front driveways. I'll kind of blow that up a little bit so you can see the changes uh, in greater detail. This is just a, a representative building cluster. Again, the alleys are gone, you have rear yard space, and access provided by a front driveway. A second significant change, just in terms of the layout, they've incorporated a cul-de-sac, which uh, will also facilitate uh, refuse service being provided by a centralized dumpster facility versus a curbside rollout container. When we look at the two, uh, you know, again, the, the original plan on the left, the new plan on the right, that just gives you the comparison side by side. Okay, uh, as part of our conditional rezoning process, we did hold uh, two community meetings on November the 9th where we had eight members of the public uh, participate. There's a, some really good discussion on a variety of topics. I won't go through every one of those there, but that gives you just kind of a broad snapshot. Uh, and generally, from, uh, from the feedback we received at the community meeting, most folks were uh, supportive of the changes or just supportive of the overall pro uh, townhome project. In terms of comprehensive plan consistency, uh, the project is located in the US 74 West Corridor. It's identified as a, traditional a potential future traditional neighborhood development. Uh, back in 2015, and we continued, to, uh, it was found consistent with the land use and housing and transportation goals of the plan, and these changes have not changed, uh, the mo proposed modifications have not changed that consistency. Now, the planning board uh, reviewed this project at their November 21st meeting. There were two members of the public that signed up to, to speak. Uh, their comments were, one, just a question about planning board voting protocol, and a second, uh, expressed concerns about the increased unit count. Again, six additional units contemplated with the proposed changes. In terms of uh, planning board discussion items, they had a, a healthy discussion on a variety of aspects. Some key topics included you know, whether or not the homes were going to be for sale, offered for sale, or if they're going to be rental. There was an adjacent natural gas kind of distribution facility, and there's some safety concerns expressed by uh, some uh, members. Uh, clarification on the age restriction status. Is it age restricted versus age targeted? It is an age targeted community. And then just how parking is handled, particularly kind of overflow type parking. The uh, planning board after its deliberation and receiving public comments did ultimately make a recommendation uh, to approve to the town council. And I'll go ahead and read the uh, consistency findings that the planning board developed, largely mirroring what was approved in 2015. The proposed modified district provides for a quality residential use at an appropriate location, providing a more appropriate transition between land uses um, than the original uh, light industrial district would have. The proposed district uh, modification includes uh, construction of curb and gutter and sidewalk improvements, which enhances mobility in the area. 
uh, construction of turn lane improvements, and dedication of right of way on adjacent roads to meet transportation needs in the community. The request for the district is a reasonable request and is in the public interest uh, because it provides an appropriate transitional use between uh, nearby single family communities, creates a mix of housing sizes within the 74 West Corridor, and provides uh, expanded um, opportunities for the overall uh, Indian Trail citizens and business owners, uh, while also making utility infrastructure investment uh, while being uh, generally in conformity of the comprehensive plan. So now that I'm, uh, as I've completed the presentation, we're going to ask that you uh, receive um, uh, this information uh, as well as any public comments. The developers uh, representative from Eagle Engineering would also like to make a presentation to the town council. But ultimately, I'm going to ask that you, uh, when you receive all of this information, uh, take two actions. One is to approve, if you're able, the consistency findings, and two, reach a final uh, decision of either approve as presented, approve with modifications, deny it, or uh, request more information from staff or the applicant. At this point, I'll turn it over to the planning board, or I'm sorry, the town council for any initial uh, questions. Otherwise, I'd ask that the uh, developers represent have given, be given an opportunity to speak. Council. Okay, Ross, you can. Representing the petitioner and the development team are Mr. Dennis Moser and Mr. Cody Turner. Uh, thank you, Rox, once again for a very thorough review uh, in your summary presentation this evening. What you see before you here on slide one uh, is what was approved in the original petition in 2015. Um, the, the plan uh, that was approved, and I'm going to point, I know you guys don't have the benefit of what I'm pointing on the screen, but for our audience behind, uh, this plan included a turn lane. Uh, Turn lane and a paper transition on Fowler Road, which is a requirement by DOT. Uh, it included an internal loop road system. Uh, it included two water quality features. You see all the townhomes. These are the roofs of the townhomes. Uh, there were two water quality features, one in the center of the site and one on the low end of the site. Uh, and then it also had the feature of a rear load alley uh, so that all of the, the residences would be accessed by the residents uh, from a rear load while parking for the uh, guests and neighbors <coughs> street parking in the center loop. Um, it's important to recognize that the town had agreed that the center loop would be owned and maintained, would be dedicated to the town, uh, but the rear load alley all the way around this project would be owned and maintained by the residents through the HOA association. <coughs> Beyond this zoning approval, uh, the petitioner has secured approval of the construction documents uh, for both the site and the buildings, uh, and a grading permit to commence site construction has actually been issued at this point. Concurrent with the plan design and the approval process, the petitioner has also worked to define market demand and to secure development interest for the rear load town home project, which you see here, with little success. The reality is there's just a much greater demand for a front load town home product with a rear yard than there is for a rear alley product, especially when the burden of the alleyway maintenance would be placed on the future HOA. So, in response to that market demand for the front load product, the development team has modified the site plan as presented here, uh, and, and the petition has been modified to approve uh, this zoning, as Rox has outlined tonight. So, this plan includes the exact same turn lane paper transitions on Fiber Road. It includes a widened interior loop. It includes just a single water quality feature in the center of the site, which from a maintenance and engineering perspective is a more efficient way to address the water quality, the tension and water quality. Uh, it removes the rear access drive, so there's no access around the rear of this site. Uh, and this proposed configuration actually results in the reduction of impervious area, pavement and rooftops, 
uh, by a little over 12,800 square feet. So there's less impervious area created in this. So this is the very same image, just with a color rendering. I think it presents quite a bit better. You can see rooftops, roads, you see the interior water quality feature. You see the green space, the planting perimeter, planting around uh, significant trees to be maintained um, in the front yard, uh, right against Potter Road. With the site modifications that have been outlined here, all other elements of the approved zoning will remain intact, including the approved building plans. Mark, that's our next slide. So these are the building plans uh, that were presented in support of the zoning petition in 2015, uh, and subsequently approved rather from that zoning. So the buildings did not change, the materials, the quality, the standard of construction did not change between the approval in 2015 uh, and this presentation. On November, November 9th, the development team uh, conducted two community meetings. A summary of the conversations are presented in your packets. And general public response for the modified site plan and for the, especially the removal of the perimeter uh, alleyway was very positive. Specific discussion points were rent versus sale. The developer is developing the project with units to sale, not to rent. Uh, a discussion point was about the size and the price point. Units will range in size from just under 1,000 square feet to over 1,400 square feet, and the price points are expected to be in the low to mid $200,000. Uh, age restriction, no, these units are not age restricted, but they are age targeted, and some of that is given by the fact that the master bedroom will be downstairs, and that in itself meant to an age targeted patron. Um, there has been a bit of discussion about the natural gas substation. Right, if, if we could, if we could go back one slide. Um, so again, Piedmont Natural Gas owns a piece of property in what is the north or northwest corner of the site. It is owned, operated, and maintained by Piedmont Natural Gas. It is not a part of this project. Um, but during the community meetings, there was uh, concern expressed by an adjacent resident uh, over the placement of bollards and fencing that currently exists around that natural gas station. Uh, as a matter of a safety concern, that's why that discussion came about. While the substation is owned by Piedmont Natural Gas and not the development team, uh, we did commit at that community meeting that we would reach out to Piedmont Natural Gas and convey those concerns. I have spoken with Mr. Mark Childers at Piedmont Natural Gas, uh, and we presented the concerns. He noted that he felt the placement was a function of the curvature of the road. And I'm going to try to explain that. So on the east side of the substation, there are bollards. And on the road side, which is the north side of the substation, there are bollards. But there are none on the west side, which is actually where a row of trees exists. Um, the best explanation I could get from uh, Mr. Childers at Piedmont Natural Gas was he felt the, uh, a, a car traveling from east to west stood a better chance of leaving the road and running into that. And that's why they put bollards on that side, because that is the curvature of the road. A car traveling from west to east is much less likely, and there are cedar trees there as well. However, uh, I did leave my contact information. He said he would reach out to his construction people, and they would take a closer look. In a subsequent conversation on December the 20th, uh, Mr. Childers, with being my guest again, noted, and I quote, for our conversation this morning, uh, the regulator station is scheduled to be reworked in the near future, so there will not be anything done at this time. Uh, that's the end quote. However, he went on to say that they do anticipate improvements to the facility will be scheduled over, over the next year. So I take that to mean this calendar year. Uh, again, this is not owned by the development team. We're just trying to help bring closure to an issue that has been expressed. Um, if I may, am, am I limited to three minutes, Mr. Mayor, as the petitioner on this? For your comment? Now, we'll give you a few more minutes. Go ahead. Just, uh, just, just a couple more recommendations. Okay. Okay. On November, November 21st, the planning board heard the petition and voted 6 1 to recommend approval to the town council, uh, noting the conditional district modification meets the goals of the land use and housing and the mobility and transportation plan. Um, again, we're thankful for the time and efforts made by Mr. Burns, Mr. Sadik, and the town staff. We're pleased that the town staff and the planning board have recommended approval of the modified zoning petition as it's presented this evening. Uh, we feel that the end result will prove to be a better product for the future residents of Potter Town, uh, as well as the residents surrounding this community. <coughs> it's our hope that you, the town council, will support the staff's findings and the planning board's recommendation 
and will approve this petition as presented tonight. Myself, other members of the development team are here. If there are any questions that we can answer, uh, if there are folks that have signed up to speak and that prompts more questions, we we'll certainly be glad to respond after that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Council. Okay, well, Mr. Ross, hold up there. Council, you have questions for Mr. Ross while he's up there? Mm, no. Mr. Ross, did you answer Mr. Simmons' question? I, I trust that I did. And if I'm, I'm going to speak, Mr. Simmons uh, lives across the street. Um, and if, if I miss speaking anyway, Mr. Simmons, please jump up and tell me. Uh, lives in the home across the street from the entrance to Flower Town. And he expressed a couple concerns about development that had gone on on that property in years past um, under previous ownership. Let me, let me clarify that. Um, he, Mr. Simmons, I believe, is concerned that as traffic leaves the site, headlights will shine into his house. He asked if the development team would be amenable to providing some enhanced landscaping along his property line. I spoke to the developer, and they're more than willing to do that. Uh, he also expressed a concern about the level of dust control during the construction. If his house gets dirty as a result of this development, would the developer be willing to pressure wash his house? And the answer to that is affirmative as well. Thank you. Are you still wanting to speak during the public comments, or have you been have your questions been answered? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russ. There's no further questions. I will close the public comments section of this public hearing, as there's no one to speak on it. Council, is there any discussion? If not, we'll need two motions. Yeah, well, um, I'd like to talk about it a little bit. Um, you know, originally this, this project was designed for 35 units, and, um, and now it's being proposed for 41, which is an increase in density. And I, I attended uh, one of those meetings and expressed some concerns on the behalf of a lot of the residents during the last campaign, is that we have a lot of overcrowding going on here in Indian Trail, and we just continue to add to it and add to it. Now, you know, this project is presently approved for 35 units. Uh, the design is, leaves a lot to be desired, of course. Um, and, and I think that there is some room for compromise here to perhaps um, limit the, the amount of houses to the original intent and allow the developer to change the, the design to, to benefit the developer in a way that he can market these these townhomes. But I don't think it's necessary for us to just um, approve it for 41 units when, when this is not what I've been hearing from the residents, what we want. There's a, a couple of other concerns that I had listening to this, the presentation, is that it, it is age targeted, which, you know, that to me means pretty much absolutely nothing if you're trying to portray it as being age restricted. If, if you're marketing this to older people, but you're saying it's going to be age targeted, then, then anyone with the money can show up and, and buy it. Um, and at that point, are these going to be young folks purchasing the properties that will have children that will impact, you know, the schools and the roads and, and, um, and police services? So, you know, we, we had a meeting with the developer, and, and we, we had a really good exchange of ideas. And um, one of the things that, I, that I, I expressed to them, I said, with this change in design, um, you're going from, you know, removing the garages, which is, which is a nice feature, and as well, you're also removing the trash cans from each one of the lots. And you're now putting in a, a, a dumpster um, down at the end of the property. So we did some calculations, and it looked like it was approximately 400 feet from some of the townhomes to that dumpster. And so when I'm hearing it's being age-targeted to older people, I'm, and I'm thinking about myself in a few more years, would I be willing to travel that 400 feet toting my recyclables and my trash? Um, doesn't, I, I, that wouldn't appeal to me if I'm a, a purchaser. So um, I think that there's room to for some redesign. I'm not sure how we go about you know, making these recommendations, but I would like to see it uh, 
be 35 units, uh, remove that road. I think it makes a better design. And um, if it is going to be age targeted, you know, that's fine. If it was going to be age restricted, I would probably then be okay with making it 41 units because then you're, you're not going to have that impact of uh, six additional units, 12 additional cars, or with children, you know, so they kind of equal out. But uh, that's just a few of my thoughts about it. Good thoughts. Council? Any other comments? Mr. Cohn? Nobody else is going to come in. I'll, I'll, I'll make a few comments, and I, I respect everything that Jerry said there. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and i tell you what I'd, I would like to see, and, and, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I'm not really uh, against the the six the six additional um, units. You got more land, you got more area there. But what I'd kind of like to see is is I'd like to see maybe the developer, if in fact can build six more units there, and uh, and and make additional income. And and I and I hope he does. And I I know that's that's that has a lot to do with the reasoning of wanting to do this is to to make additional income, is maybe work out something with the with the town to where maybe he can set some improvements to the to the uh, maybe build a sidewalk that goes down uh, with that down the road or, or, or make it a, a nice uh, corridor place to, to visit to walk downtown and, and maybe agree to spend some of the additional monies that you might be making from the addition addition of six units to spend a certain amount of money to to uh, beautify the area and beautify the downtown area and could work that out with, with the town. Um, I, one of the things I, I listen to, and, and Jerry, I agree with just about everything that you say. Um, you know, I think they're going to be, right off the top of my head, they're probably, what, one and two bedroom, uh, uh, going by square footage, I'm guessing they're one and two bedroom. And there are limitations to how many children you can have in a uh, I do believe there's a limitation. Is there limitations on how many children can live in a in a particular townhouse, or is it just apartments? Uh, no, there, there's there's no limitations, at least as it relates to the UDO, for how many children can live. Okay, but typically a, a two hundred and twenty forty thousand dollar unit is not going to have a, a whole lot of children in a one or two bedroom uh, house. Um, so th those are just my thoughts. I I'm not dead set against the additional six units. Uh, I, I can understand, you know, with the, with the additional land that they have and the ability to do that. And I agree with you, Jerry. I never thought about the garbage and the age targeted, uh, uh, targeted about, you know, carrying your garbage down there. But um, when, when, as Mr. Ross said, when you talk about age targeting, you're basically – it means it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't. So, uh, you know, you you can. I'm sure there'll be older people living in there and younger people that live in there. So, anyway, that those are just my thoughts of it. Any other council comments? I've got some. Go um, I didn't see anywhere in the plans that there was anything about any kind of a community building. I was thinking that if this gets changed to where the other six units aren't built, that would give more land space, that there might be a consideration of building some type of community buildings area that they could meet at. Doesn't need to be anything like a pool or anything like that, but a social area. I didn't see anything in there. And I thought if, uh, if it goes that these uh, other six units aren't approved, that there could be some design change for that, that maybe you could uh, add an amenity to the uh, area for it, because Depending on whether it stays age targeted or age restricted, um, it would be nice to have an area that they could, could uh, a community area that could meet, a clubhouse or something of that sort. Um, and I think what David was talking about, um, in the ways of a sidewalk, it would make probably nice to have a sidewalk to uh, go down uh, Plyler there and, and uh, hook into the uh, sidewalk that's on Unionville Indian Trail Road. Because uh, people like to walk, they need a safe place to walk. People are constantly taking their pets or whatever with them, and or just out for a stroll. And so that would be a nice option there, uh, and that would also 
head back up towards town. So that give them access from there, safe access from the community back up towards the uptown area. Um, just that was just one thought I had on it. Moser, Mr. Moser, if you have some comments, please. Well, I, I, actually, I was, it says a, a, a roof structure. That could be a gazebo. I mean, I was thinking more of a building kind of area. Well, that's why I was saying if the other six units weren't built, then there would be room is what I'm saying. I 
I'm sorry, Dennis. I know you said that I don't remember asking that question. Yeah. I, I, I really don't. You, you, you did. I, it always stuck out in my mind. But, uh, the, um, um, but, but, but anyway, um, the, the, the Bible says that the construction costs have gone up about 33 to 35%. And that's the thing that made the difference in feasibility and, and not. <coughs> gotcha. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? I got a couple. Um, I, maybe I, I misunderstood, um, and um, you know, when we had the meeting, um, and and so the public understands what 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 we did was that um, two council members then met with um, Dennis and one of his associates and and talked it out. And the reason for two is that you know it, it, we can't have three. So I, I want to make that clear that when we did this, we did this to get more information. Um, and, and get a, a better understanding of, of what was going on. A um, couple things I heard tonight were maybe, uh, in my opinion, were different. I, and I may have made, uh, it may have been all on me, but um, I heard that the perimeter was going to be maintained by the HOA, that it was going to be um, built and maintained, uh, built by Moser and, and then maintained by the HOA. I was thinking that that perimeter road was going to be maintained by Indian Trail. Is that wrong? No, we, we heard at the time that the roadway was, when we had discussion that it would be saving for the town if the town doesn't maintain that roadway. Uh, one of the reasons why I made a comment in regard to that outer loop that it's better not to be included in that development was because we don't want to maintain it, too much asphalt to maintain. Does that clarify your point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, John, you want to explain that? Because um, that's what you um, just described is what I understood and heard as well. So, right. Yeah. I would just say that Indian Trail has historically never maintained alleys, so they've always been maintained by the Homeowners Association. That's, okay. that's common practice with Indian Trail. So, Mike, the way you heard it's the way I heard it. Okay. Um, secondly, um, I heard that... Um, I've heard two di different, I think I've heard, two different um, uh, price points. I heard, I thought Mr. Ross said somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 225 to 250, and then I'm hearing you're saying it's 165 to 195. Is that? Well, with the other product, and the, and the confusion that we, with the other product, that's what it would have had to have been um, for us to utilize the rear loaded units with this product. A um, couple other things, um, you know, we talked about um, um, the gas, I'll call it a pumping station, and, and um, talked about um, maybe doing at least something that I think that would help, you know, um, both the, the community and, and maybe selling is, is to um, maybe put some tree, beautify it a little bit. Um, and then the, the other thing that was discussed was, was um, um, like uh, Jerry had talked about, that there was a couple of different uh, maybe options of reducing it from, from 41 to maybe to 38. Is there any, is that possible? We prefer not to do that, absolutely, on the landscaping and, and you know, working around the gas meters there. Right. Walkability to the downtown, walkability to the park, walkability to um, the town hall, you know, 
and so we're we're promoting this at walking here downtown in Cedar Park. So we would we would that would be a great compromise for us to build the sidewalk if the town would be willing to get the right away from the adjoining property owners. We don't have the ability to do that. If you'll get it, we'll pay for it. So I mean, we don't we don't want to be out there negotiating right away on other folks' property. Uh, so we would be willing, or we would be willing to put up the cost of it. Maybe into some type of fund that you guys do it, and maybe you get the right away or something like that. So yeah. We would have to do it on behalf of North Carolina DOT because the right of way is owned by them. So, if if, if council decides that's the route, uh, definitely we will assist in stepping in and trying to get the right of way and maybe do whatever it takes to get the sidewalk as long as long as it's covered by the developer. Um, do we know, and I guess this is to, to you or, or to staff, um, in terms of expectations of when um, the Super Street intersections and when the bypass uh, construction will be complete? Uh, is, that, is that the Super Street for Independence, Independence Boulevard? Yes. At two, the end of 2019, okay. that's the last date we received from the state. Two thousand nineteen or the end of two thousand eighteen? Uh, two thousand eighteen, I'm sorry, so beginning of two thousand nineteen. That is correct, I'm okay. sorry. And you're talking about building st uh, starting to build mid year? I think it would take another um, probably six months to go through the post any process, another six to eight months to do the infrastructure and then another So, so it should be built. The, the roads. The roads. Should, yeah, we should, should get some done. relief from traffic. Independence. Right. Um, we see the new needle um, right that we're doing there at, on the Oregon Trail Road as a real benefit to walk be able to walk to that. Um, so you're creating, you know, uh, an area here that's great. I mean, you know, in the downtown, you know, I think we've got to have the density um, and the more that we put here. Shirley, just for the record, in the meeting that we had, it was the price was one ninety to two twenty. So, uh, on the, on the old units, and we talked about both sides. Right, here, right. The old units, it, it, it was higher, uh, and we talked about numerous different ranges. We talked about what I would have to get to break even on those units versus what I'd have to sell them for to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So we talked about numerous numbers in those meetings, and that, I'm sure that. Well, I think Monty has a good idea. If I were living there, I would like a little clubhouse uh, because the, pl the uh, units are small to begin with. I live in a small house, so I know well what I'm talking about here. here. And it would be nice for a family came or something, they could use that uh, facility. And if you took, what about taking one or two out and then putting a little clubhouse in? Thank you. 
thought about the schedule is you get it's just too small to get them, you know, four or five hundred units or two hundred units, you could do something like that, but not in twenty one or thirty five. There's just no way that you can make that feasible. And 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 then I'm looking at, you know, what do I do with it then when there's a a, a, a burden that's forced on me, you know, by the town that I know is not feasible. So I don't want to stand here and say yes. I think we're looking for ideas to, to help that approve this. No, we talked about traffic, 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 because when all of us were campaigning, that was that was the first, everybody's shaking their head. And th this is what it's about. And I made a promise when I came here that I was going to try very hard not to put any big developments through right now. Uh, that's just my personal feelings. It's not anyone else's here. And um, I just can't see this working out if you don't do something, as far as I'm concerned getting some type of a little clubhouse here. It doesn't have to be ornate because, you know, you've got a small uh, units here to begin with. And the other thing with the age uh, targeted, um, when you get a lower price like this, um, people will buy it for... Bridge night. <laughs> so they have some place to go. I mean, a lot of them won't be driving anymore. I think I think it's, I think the dialogue is between the council and yourself in terms of what their expectations are for the project. So, it's a matter of kind of generating ideas that address their concerns. Well, I, I think it was your idea, but but that and your thoughts that that was what you would like to see. So one idea might be you know, a bridge between the two, and I'm just throwing this out and take it or leave it. Whatever is, you know, I heard uh, an idea from council about basically a conditioned building, an enclosed you know, community building like you have in other uh, neighborhoods. This, what's currently on, on the plan or in the conditions is a, a roofed structure, whether that's a pergola, whether that's a gazebo, it's a little, a little less than defined. So maybe what's you know, one idea would be, what about something in the middle, like a pavilion space? So you have an open roof structure of some you know, f significant size, concrete slab floor, it's wire, you know, it has electricity, it has maybe water run to it. So you have services, amenities, and features, but you don't have the expense that you were expressed of a power bill or a significant power bill or air conditioning bill every month. Um, not as expensive to construct as a, you know, an enclosed community building. Um, just some food for thought, for whatever that, that's where. Well, having bridge clubs or a place to have it, that's a big thing for senior citizens. And if you're, this is what you're trying to attract by having age well, targeting. We're trying to create this community where, you know, they come to each other's homes and they come into their living rooms and then each one of them has a game room, bonus room. You know, every single unit has one, you know, or uh, the bigger units have a bonus room, entertainment room upstairs. Why, why would they not want to gather in their homes where their food is?
And then we have the seniors that can't go up the steps either <clears throat> to that room that you're talking about. So. Would you have to redraw this again then if you considered doing that? Um, no, I think we'd, the only option to put it would be where we we're planning the gazebo mm. and all of that. Mm. Um, okay. And then you know, it's concerned do you have desks to it? Do we have adequate parking? We do have parking mm -hmm. there around the center. I think it just opens up a whole lot of, lot of questions that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable answering. Right. Well, we've gone from a clubhouse to a gazebo now. That's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never talked about a clubhouse. No, I'm saying this no, is what no, he said, but no. then you were saying it was just an idea I brought up. Another couple of quick things is just to remind council that this is an already approved, uh, already approved, 35 units are approved. So I know, you know, we all don't want to see traffic. I mean, that, that's, there's a fact for that. We, we don't want to see it. So we're really talking about six units. We're not talking about 35 units or, or whatever. We're talking about six additional units. And um, uh, just, I, I lived in a, a town host townhome community we bought like 17 years ago in the Ballantyne area and if I remember right there might have been 90 of them and we didn't have a clubhouse and I never really actually thought about a clubhouse to be honest with you not to say that, that it wouldn't be a nice would it would not have been a nice thing to have uh, there are costs associated with it and I'm sure the HOA a fees and that type thing that come along with it but I, I think as a council we've got to we've got to think about exactly what we're doing we're not approving uh, 41 units were approving six units and um, um, you know under the circumstances and, and I, I did have two two other questions one of them I think up right top of my head is is there anything written in provisions that only a certain amount of those could be rented uh, in the uh, and, and I think that'd be very important in that area that that uh, I know in in some neighborhoods you, you you can't you can't buy a particular. As a matter of fact, my mom lived in in some condos, older condos. My mom and dad in Charlotte when they passed away, we wanted to we wanted to rent it and we couldn't because uh, th there were already too many rentals in the in those condos. Will there be a provision in there written that only so many of them can be a certain percentage of them can be rented? But I think that would be important. Uh, they can put that. Well, not you to rent them. Not you to rent them, but the the, I'm not sure. I think the HOA the HOA mm -hmm. bylaws can set that up. Yeah, covenant covenant. It would be it would have to be HOA bylaws. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. correct. It would be, but, but do they not have anything to do? I mean, the, can they not set up the HOA bylaws for themselves? Oh, they would definitely set up the HOA I mean, bylaws. Right. Setting them up, so yeah, it's set up, up the bylaws. I, I just don't know legally. I've never done that. Right. Well, sooner or later, somebody's going to come in. Somebody's going to want to rent it, and 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 you hate to see that turn into a rental, a, a, a whole bunch of rentals. And and yep. and I think that would something that would need to be put in the bylaws that you you, you wouldn't be able to rent. And and, and you really got to protect the people that have have bought bought them because if you end up getting fifty percent rentals, then of course the the you know the value of the ones that are the people live there go down as as rentals go up. HOA, it's covenant code restrictions. 
and then and uh, you can do it through the HOA bylaws. And what was the the budget for that? Did, was there a budget of? We, when the plot blocks had asked us to do, we felt like that it would be around fifty thousand dollars to get you know the cedar and um, you know have it crafted. It's a handcrafted you know product, and then it's hand laid stone um, and um, you know fire pit, you know, getting the gas. It's a gas for you know, pushing buttons, comes on, nobody builds a fire or anything like that. It's, very safe, you know, the residents push it, turn it on, um, you know, as, um, you know, at their will. Okay. <clears throat> You've thrown a lot of ideas out there at him. You look a little confused there. Um, what are you asking for? Ex you asked for a building. He's got a $50,000 budget. What are you throwing back at Mr. Moser here as a possible condition? Well, I, I want to go back to the restricted versus targeted. I mean, we keep talking about folks that are elderly or becoming elderly. And, um, but you were seemed resistive to making the deed restricted. Is there a, can, can you help me out and to understand why? Right. Um, you know, life a, is a series of compromises uh, if we're going to successfully navigate it. And I could be comfortable with the additional six units if it was restricted, age restricted. Um, I do like the idea about having a, um, in the covenant, about yeah. so many rentals. Uh, that protects the neighbors there. But, you know, ultimately I'm trying to protect the residents of Indian Trail. I, I don't want to get in your way of making money. But um, again, the residents are my, my, my primary concern, and I, and I want to do what's in the best interest of Indian Trail, the residents, and, and you as a partner. Um, I'd like to go back to the trash cans again. You know, if, we're, if we truly are targeting the elderly folks, do you expect them to, to, to move that trash all the way from one end of the complex yeah. to the other and rainy days and icy days and that's a great point i mean you know i think our typical buyer would be a single you know person if so maybe two um they're going to generate very little trash um if they want to take it down there it's a great little circle to stick it in the back of their car they're going to have a tidy neat little small you know bag and then they toss it in there um i don't see that Bins where? Down at, at where the dumpster area? Right. And um, so you're going to recycle, uh, you're going to put your trash in there, you don't have the unsightly cans, you know, all along in every you know, position there at, at each location. Um, I see it as, you know, actually a benefit and them liking that. We put it at the very back along the railroad, tucked back in. Um, you know, we're getting, you know, I think, you know, pretty far away from, you know, you know, this thing's on a railroad, it's adjacent to a mobile home park, adjacent to an industrial building, um, you know, and it was owned industrial when I originally bought it, and that expired for 45 thousand square feet. You know, um, you know, you know I, I, I love this town, I love working here, but it, it's 
some point it just it can't be so difficult every single little project. You know, we have to partner and, and make these things fun and exciting, you know, again. And, and I want to do the right thing here. Um, you know, so you know, I think I'm willing to do, you know, the sidewalk. I'm willing to do the around the, uh, you know, the gas thing. You know, I'm willing, you know, to put in, you know, a $50,000 amenity around, you know, the, uh, the center area. But uh, the units are designed for single. You know, I just I don't see, see any need to complicate the deed or the street. And that's a whole other level. I don't think there's ever been one here. I'd like to try this, test it, and then, hey, you know, if that works well, and then we can move to another comfort level on restricting it. I, I think that's fine. Um, but I, I'd like to try this one right there. You know, and I'm stepping out and risking here too to bring, you know, this type of product to your downtown. I think there has to be some compromise with my vision and my vision in trying to provide somewhere for, for seniors to live. I'm not I'm not doing this out of my entertainment. I'm doing this with everything we do. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. <coughs> All right, Council, you've debated this for about an hour. Um, you've got Mr. Moser, if I understand you correctly, you're agreeing to sidewalks. Sidewalks. Working with sidewalks, a $50,000 amenity there that's covered, convenient, and putting a restriction of amount of rentals. Um, my two cents on that one is, in all the years I've been in the lending, the ones that did have restricted rentals had them at no more than 20%. Uh, when it goes over 20%, it complicates the lending on it. When it, more than 20% in any community. Um, yeah, the deed restrictions to age restricted yeah, restrict severely. Um, okay. the, great, the greater problem than the six units would be if too many were rented. Mm -hmm. um, and also to beautify around the, the gas station and assist Mr. Simmons there with his issues. Um, if the rest is in your hands, Council, that's where we're let off. You've got a couple of options there. You've got to approve, deny, or table it for further discussion. But you've got two motions to make. Are you including the gazebo on that? Oh, yeah, that yeah. $50,000 covered amenity. That's what he was covered talking amenity. about. It's yes. already on there. Right. I'm just, just, just right. making sure. So yeah, we're looking at 50000 the sidewalk connection, um, beautification of the gas pump. Um, you know, 20% to me sounds high. It's it, eight units. Huh? It's eight That's units. It's eight units out of 41. I mean, the I, max I've seen is 20%. Uh, you know, I could be comfortable with, with six, with 15%. That's your choice. Or, uh, you know. I, I could care, I, six, 15 or 12, I think now we're getting, yeah, that's we're getting a little nit, yeah. nit niche there, but that's fine. I mean, we can, we can do 15 or 20%, 20%, eight, it, it, and I'm not familiar with real estate. Uh, you are? That's the most I've seen. It's well, What's common? Common? Yeah. 15 or 20 percent max <laughs> in a community that have had rental restrictions on them. When it goes above that, banks tend not to want, especially in a condo or a townhouse community, uh, government won't lend on them if they go over 20 percent. Um, their statistics show that it starts to degrade the living livability right. and the quality of life in them and they don't want to take the risk. Gotcha. Okay. So, 15 it's in your hand. 15%. Uh, what? 
I would be in favor of 20%. 20% sponsor, 20% all right, you 20%. You okay with that, Mr. Moser? To restrict the deed, and it okay. really doesn't affect you, Dennis. It, it, it no, really, no. I, that's the right. second time around that it actually helps the buyers in the long yeah. run. Right. It, and that's what we're Protect wanting to do: is help the people that are living there. Yeah. Already. Uh, um, if some, you have to, you got the two motions there that you have to make for the required consistency findings, and then whatever you choose to do with the second one. Uh, excuse me, quick. It sounds like we're going to have some additional conditions yes. that I think we want to get pretty precise um, before the vote. So I'm I'll not sure how, between all of us if we can get those written to a place tonight um, that's, that's, that's supportable for everybody. Um, I'm probably okay with a general sidewalk from A here to A to B done pursuant to all town code type language if Rox is okay with that. Um, but I just want to be, I, I, I don't want you, we, we, these are some big deals that I don't want to make, I want to make sure we're doing correctly um, when this ordinance is passed because we're not going to change it again. I know you don't want to. I know you don't want to go through this process again. So it could be that we get an approval subject to the final drafting of these conditions um, done with town, staff, and the developer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Council, need the two motions. So I guess I can't do step them. one is to uh, make the required consistency f findings as read into record by staff. You making that motion? I'm making that motion. I'll second it. Wait a <laughs> You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Heads made the motion to make the, fi the required consistency findings. All in favor? Aye. That would be unanimous. Okay, um, if there's a motion to approve, the mo make the motion to include um, agreed upon sidewalks, the 20% limitation of rentals and the restrictions and covenants, the beautification around the gas, and the $50,000 improvement of a covered area um, to be included in that approval. If there's any other motion, it's in the council's hands. Quick. Pending attorney approval and right. staff, staff approval. Staff, right. Final drafting by staff and attorney. Quick question. Um, yes, sir. Do we need to, to set an amount of approval? I mean, how much money to set us on approval for to build a sidewalk? No? What we can do is uh, the language would say something along the lines of he promises to build a sidewalk or pay the town cash in lieu, and then we'll get it. We'll, once we get a budget for the sidewalk, we that will be a, condi a part of his condition, well, so he can either build it himself. To say sidewalk from a, point A to point B. Exactly. Know what the point a yes, point A. Point a, a I, I think so that's only fair to you to make sure that we've got that restricted to what. So I guess we need to find, figure out where, from where to, to where. Do we need to find that out right now? I, 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 I think we, perfect. Just from our property line to the apartment property line. So, um, and Rox may can pull it up and give the distance as well. Um, uh, um, I, I do you have a point to Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. John, with... with yes, yes, absolutely. Will the uh, Piedmont Natural Gas Pump Station has, will it have any impact on the sidewalk construction from your knowledge? Council? 
It's in your hands. Yes, Can I clarify one thing really quick, please? I'm sorry. Are, are you agreeing to, in the event there is a cost to acquire the right of way, the town could do it, but you would reimburse the town for the cost of that right of way, or are you asking the town to actually pay for the right of way? But, but I guess, I, Dennis, I guess the right-of-way probably is about 50 feet. You have two lanes out there. I think it should be enough area out there. I don't see it as being an issue yeah. if, we, if we can do it in the DOT right-of-way. But, but if you run into any drainage issue, will that be, be part of the... Okay. No, I think the only pinch point you get is at the, the gas facility. I think that's your, that's your pinch point. Is okay. it in a flooding area? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, then I'll, I'll move on if everybody's ready. Yeah. We're ready. It's okay. not perfect. Uh, we'll go to uh, make the final decision, too, and I'm assuming this is what council wants to do, uh, uh, approve as, pres well, no. am I no. uh, approved with modifications? Approve with, modifications. <laughs> approve right. with the already mentioned modifications. Okay. Right. That's a motion. Oh. Mr. Cohen's made the motion to approve this project with the pending modifications of the sidewalk acquisition. And can we also add to the motion with final language to right. be to be, or the language to be finalized by t attorney and staff, yes. town attorney and staff, Absolutely. with the aforementioned right. improvements and pending final approval from attorney and town staff. All in favor? Opposed. Shirley, you didn't put your hand up for either? Pardon me? You didn't put your hand up for either? Or I, didn't? Did. She, she did did I did. She did the first time. Oh, the first for approval. Okay, I did not see it. Okay. Let the record on. stand. The motion passes four to one with Councilman Morse opposing. Motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. That brings us to item B, zoning modifications. One, ZM2017. Dash zero one two four five one zero four Strand Drive two point four four acres. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Okay. Okay. I'm here to discuss fifty one oh four and fifty two oh six Strand Drive. Um, it, uh, pertaining to these properties, we are discussing an annexation, which is annexation number 148, as well as uh, two zoning map amendments. Um, the numbers are listed above. For a location overview, uh, these properties are located north of the Old Hickory Business Park and west of Oak Spring Road. Both parcels are owned by the same family. For the annexation component of this, the request is to annex 5104 Strand Drive, which is 2.44 acres in size. Um, it's located in unincorporated Union County. Uh, the owners have requested annexation so their daughter can construct a house on the vacant lot. Uh, the intent behind the annexation and the zoning map amendments is to adjust the shared boundary line. Um, again, it's owned by the same family and then construct a single family house on the currently vacant lot. Uh, 5104 uh, Strand Drive, as stated, is located within unincorporated Union County. Um, it is zoned um, residential single family, which is R20 in the county, and the, re the request uh, upon annexation would be to annex it uh, residential single family, which is SF1 in the town of Indian Trail. 5206 Strand Drive is already within the town of Indian, yep, with already, already within the town of Indian Trail. It's vacant. It's currently zoned light industrial, and the request would be to zone it to residential single family, uh, which would be SF1. Um, again, because the request is to, um, to build a house on the vacant parcel, the, the property lines where they share a uh, where they have the shared property line would be to just uh, clean that up, square it up a bit. So that's why we have both parcels involved in this situation. 
Uh, surrounding zoning. <coughs> Again, uh, one property is already zoned light industrial within the town. Uh, to the north, it's zoned SF1 within the town of Indian Trail. Uh, the property that's within the town of in, within unincorporated Union County is zoned residential single family. The properties, as you can see, to the south and also the east are zoned uh, light industrial. Uh, I know looking at the map, uh, you see a lot of light industrial, and then you see the uh, single family in yellow to the north. Uh, but the area is predominantly, predominantly rural in nature. The family has lived on the property uh, for generations. Uh, and uh, like I say, if you look at the area, it's, it's that area in particular is rural in nature. If you look at the uh, future land use map and the comprehensive plan, it's located within the old Hickory Village. Uh, if you look at the green, it's indicated to be low density residential in the future. And so this request would be consistent with that. So no comprehensive plan amendment would be necessary. Um, as far as the annexation goes, staff recommends approval because this is consistent with the North Carolina general statutes. For the zoning map amendment, it is consistent uh, with the comprehensive plan in terms of quality of life and land use and housing. Uh, planning board did vote to recommend approval of this request at their December 19th meeting and staff does recommend approval of it. Um, again, so just to break it down for this, it's again two parcels, two properties located on Strand Drive. Uh, so you would first need to take action for the annexation components uh, and that would again only be for one property. Um, that's for 5104 Strand Drive. And then for the zoning map amendment, it would be just, just like what you did uh, for the previous case. It would be two steps. You would first need to make the required consistency, consistency findings, and then your second step would be to make a motion to either approve, deny, or um, request more information. Uh, that is all I have. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions? No. no. Uh, first, you have to annex 5104 before making the second motion. Is that correct? I'm sorry? They have to annex it before the first. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. Cannot take right. action yet. Um, so that was item C on the zoning modifications. So we have to take this out of order. Um, Council, I need a motion to either annex or not annex 5104 yes. Strand Drive. Mr. Mayor, yes. I want to make sure we have the opportunity to see if anyone signed up to speak. Oh, no, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, no one signed up for public comments on Thank this, you, so sir. I'll close them. Thank yes. you for reminding me. Council, if there's no discussion. I'll make a motion to annex 5104 Strand Drive. Mr. Collins made the motion to annex 5104 Strand Drive. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion approved. I need a second motion for the zoning modifications for uh, 5104 Strand Drive and 5206. Oh, I yes. didn't read the uh, findings into the record. Oh, please. I apologize. That's for the second part. No, <laughs> I got ahead of you. Are you ready for that component? Yes, ma'am. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So the board made the following findings, uh, one for consistency with the town and another regarding the benefit of the public. So uh, number one, the proposed UDO amendment is consistent with the following goals of the comprehensive plan. Quality of life goal number one, it will maintain the unique identity pro by preserving the character in this area that's defined by single family homes. Land use and housing goal number three, the proposed map amendment supports the residential future land use map within the old Hickory Village, which shows the area as low density residential. The amendment and desired single family home will improve the existing neighborhood by maintaining consistency with existing and future uses. This request is reasonable and is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of quality of life and land use and housing. It is consistent with the adoptive plans within the town of Indian Trail. Thank you. Okay. So I'll need two motions, one for the consistency findings. Anyone care to make that motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. To make, <laughs> to make the required consistency findings as read into record by staff. Mr. Morse has made the motion 
to make the required consistency findings as read by staff. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? That would be unanimous. I need a second motion, Council, please. I'd like to make a motion to approve as presented. <coughs> Mr. Morris has made the motion to approve as presented. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion approved. Thank you. That brings us to item 10, old business, the Monroe Road Super Street Unified Resolution. Mr. Sadek, I yield the floor to you. Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Based, uh, based on the direction that we see from council <laughs> before the election, uh, we worked very closely with uh, Karen to generate the unified resolution. We did share it with the town of Matthews and Stalins, and uh, they both agree agreed. We made the modification. Uh, maybe three weeks after, and that was during the election, uh, Hazen, the manager for Matthews, uh, said, Patrick, uh, not yet. We're going to have to put it before the new council. So we waited. And the last time I exchanged information with him, he told me that uh, during the meeting on January 7th, we should be hearing something. So. I did send him an email. I have not received any response yet. I'm, I'm going to give Hazen a couple of days. Uh, but uh, I did in the past share with Scott Cole in Albemarle with staff face-to-face -face verbally that the residents and council and Indian Trail and Stallings, they're not in favor of the super street. They are in favor of a four-lane boulevard. So that's verbal in Albemarle Road, one-on-one uh, -on -one after we finish our meeting. I also supplemented that by an email telling him the same thing, that he should be expecting a resolution from the three towns. Uh, I would suggest if I don't hear uh, from Matthews any time, uh, since we've been waiting for a while to go ahead and work with Car Karen to modify the resolution, <laughs> between us and Stallings and send it to North Carolina DOT. This is where we're at right now. But uh, exactly based on the direction we got from council and the residents, we, are, we did share with them that it's a four-lane boulevard. The last item I'd like to report on is that I, as Scott Cole himself exchanged some information with me in regard to doing more studies to the signalized intersection. And that may be in reaction to uh, hearing that we want full movements at the signalized intersection on Monroe Road. So I will check with them again when we turn in the resolution to make sure that if they're going back rethinking full movements at the signalized intersection, that means at those intersections you will not have the U-turn and you will not have the ball bow, which is a, in, in a way a good news. So we just got to give them time to come back with the result of this study but if council is ready for me to uh, move forward with uh, sending the unified resolution without Matthews, I'll be more than happy to work with Karen and we'll go ahead and do that. So I um, would like to get some direction from council in that regard. Council? Well, um, earlier today I was speaking with Jason Martin, the councilman for Stallings, and he had he told me that uh, Matthews decided not to join in on the resolution as of uh, last night. <clears throat> so I guess we need to probably move forward with Stallings and just go it alone or just go it with them. We really don't have a choice, do we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. It brings us to new business, development, UDO land development manual update. Mr. Sadek. Uh, it's one slide. Uh, what I wanted to do there, Rox and I kind of put some ideas before you in regard to land development. Uh, right now, we, we received a scope from a company uh, that has offices in both Charlotte and, and Raleigh, uh, Stuart Engineering, and they're going to be assisting us in modifying the UDO and the land development manual. Uh, we should give them the go-ahead to move forward sometimes this week. But in addition to that, uh, based on many comments that we received and heard the last couple of years, 
is I just wanted to share with you a few items that we will be implementing in the new UDO uh, without going too, uh, in too much details. As an example, uh, if a developer comes in and he's planning on backfilling uh, an area in a floodplain that we feel that we're going to have some issues with later on in the future, we're going to make a recommendation that they pull out of that floodplain. Another area is uh, if he has a large development that consists of five phases, what we'd like them to do is approach the town with one phase at a time, not go out there and shave the entire uh, five phases and make it look like a desert, and, and that, will, that will impact the environment, the wetland, et cetera, et cetera, and then that will protect us a little bit in case the economy goes sour. Uh, another area is roadways. We would like to... If we open up a big development and they construct everywhere throughout that development, uh, uh, that will impact the roadway system, construction heavy equipment on every roadway. If we do it per phases, then we will make sure that that's not occurring. And then on top of that, we could accept those roadways as quickly as possible and turn in the bonds and the surety back to the developer. Uh, in regard to uh, development next to the connector, we would ask that if the developer could put some type of berm screening, anything in regard to noise and, vi uh, 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 and vibration and uh, the lights that you get from the cars, uh, uh, any roadways that will, will conflict with our new ordinance on street uh, parking. Uh, if somebody's planning on coming, uh, putting a 30 foot wide roadway, we will definitely ask him to put some traffic calming like uh, landscape island uh, better than waiting and then we have to respond to people requesting speed bumps which is much worse than uh, landscape island uh, and the BMP is in the retention detention we want to make sure there's still some developers out there they're not ma maintaining them properly in regard to the pavement structure we are going to increase the base uh, uh, at least one additional inch so that way by the time he's finishing with his construction he'll put the surface course and that pavement will not deteriorate. We learned some lessons Todd and I from all the cores that we took throughout town. They vary so much that sometimes you say how, how did that roadway withstand all that load all these years. So with that, uh, uh, this is sort of a list we're trying to put together and add to the existing UDO, Rox and I and Todd. So that way we'll make sure that those developments, they're really going through the right criteria. So we're going to keep that UDO and that development manual updated. And, uh, you know, any chance we get, we get, we're going to do that. I just wanted to share that with council to put you at comfort level that we're working on the UDO, the land development manual, and we're going to keep an eye on stuff like that. Any, any questions for Mr. Sedgwick? No. Thank you, Pat. That brings us to item 12, discussion item, Boyd and Committee member appointments. Thank you. We have openings on the ABC Board, Board of Adjustment, Parks and Rec, Planning, Stormwater, and Transportation Committee. Um, you've had, Council, you've had a chance to look over all the applicants. Uh, if you're if applied for, an appli for a spot on a council, for a committee, and you're here, could you please stand? These are your candidates. Um, for the ABC board, raise your hand. Okay, you can put them down. Uh, board of Adjustment. Parks and Rec, Planning, Stormwater, <laughs> and Transportation. <laughs> okay, these are your candidates. You've looked over their applications. Council, it's in your hands on how you want to handle the uh, appointments. And the ABC board has seat number three available, and it looks like there is one, two, three, four candidates. Go ahead, Ms. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate the person for uh, uh, ABC store. Okay, go ahead. Excuse me until I get my list here. Yeah. We 
Where's my ABC? Mr. Jim White. That's not sure. He's not. Is that your nomination? Yes. Ms. Howes made a nomination to fill seat three, which expires in 2020, March 30th, for Mr. White, counsel. Um, I need a, I need a, all in favor for Mr. White. So she's putting Mr. White. Mr. White up, White up okay. there, yes. Yeah, all right. All in favor. All in favor of Mr. Favorite. White's nomination? Sure. That would be unanimous. No further um, action be taken. Congratulations, Mr. White. Welcome aboard. Board of Adjustment, we've had no applicants for Parks and Rec. Seats number four and seats number five are up and open. Both expire of June 30th of 2020. And for the two seats, there are two applicants, Mr. Brian Cross and Ms. Jill Alvarez. There's two applicants and two seats. You have very you easy process. I, I make a motion to bring them both both on to the okay. parks. Ms. Cohen's made the motion to appoint both Ms. Alvarez and Mr. Cross. All in favor? That too would be unanimous. Welcome aboard to the Parks and Rec Committee. For planning, there's alternate seat number two and a permanent seat number four. We'll go for the uh, permanent seat number four with an expiration of, is that the one that expires in 2018, June 30th, 2018, for permanent seat number four? Um, you have Mr. Mr. Dennis Gay, Marcus McIntyre, and Brian Cross. Anyone want to make a motion for the permanent seat, for the actual seat? Mr. Cohen. Dennis, I, I, I nominate Dennis Gay. Okay, Council. Mr. Cohen's made a, a, a nomination of Mr. Gay. All in favor? That too would be unanimous. We need a motion for the alternate. Seat number two expiring June 30th, 2020 for Marcus McIntyre or Brian Cross. I need a nomination. Anybody else? I'll make a motion for Marcus McIntyre. Mr. Kiesler's made a motion for Marcus McIntyre to fill the alternate seat. All in favor? Opposed? Only because Marcus isn't here tonight. So. Okay. Well, you don't have to have Okay. That's the state He did reason. call and say he oh. couldn't be here. Oh, he, did he? he? Yeah, he did. Oh. He Okay, let the record stand. All were in favor? Mr. Moore supposing. Mr. Mark Empire, Mr. McIntyre is appointed to that seat. Uh, Transportation Committee has two openings for seat number two expiring June 30th, 2019, and seat number four expiring June 30th, 2018. You have one applicant pick the seat. Seat number two expires on June 30th, 2019. Seat number four expires June 30th, 2018. Yes. Excuse me, we didn't realize that was up there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't have that good of memorization skills. I was looking for it on my phone. So where are we now? The bottom, Mr. transportation. Yeah. I'll make a motion for um, Mr. Mr. Murphy, Murphy uh, for seat number two, which would be expiring 6-30th, 2019. Right. Okay, all in favor of that nomination? <laughs> that would be unanimous. Congratulations to those appointed. Welcome aboard. Um, well, we gonna Did you get all that? The Stormwater Committee? <coughs> Stormwater, we have no applicants. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That. Thank you very much. Sorry. All right. Is there any more discussion on the uh, committee member appointments, or? Well, can we get an update next council meeting on the available seats still? Yeah, Mr. Sadek, would you put that on the next thing, available seats for each committee? Just an update? We'd be more than happy, sir. Uh, discussion item B, town hall community room leasing rates. Mr. Tryon, Jason, the floor is yours, sir.
in 2017, while this building was being constructed, we did some research to look at what other municipalities offered for rooms, what they offered for rates as well. <clears throat> and based off of the research we did, we created rates for the three rooms downstairs. Um, so far, we've only been in this building for about a month, a little over a month. We've had 17 different groups that have come to the town seeking rates and use for the rooms. Um, I will say that we've done it without any having advertisements. So we have not even advertised that we have the rooms. People have gotten by word of mouth that they came to the grand opening, the ribbon cutting, and saw the rooms. Um, so that is being done without any of us putting out there that we have rooms. So as soon as we do that, as soon as once it's up and running, I'm sure that the rates and the um, adjustments will be out there and we'll know that even more people want to use the rooms. So, so far, um, the rates that we have out there, like I said, we did a lot of research and they're competitive with the surrounding areas that we have looked into, including Matthews, Stallings, Mint Hill, um, and other surrounding towns outside further than that as well. The rooms that we have downstairs, they've been used so far for educational classes, meetings, trainings, programs that we do internally, and then we've had requested rates for the future for birthday parties, um, weddings, in addition to graduations as well. So we're getting a wide variety of use, and we just wanted to tell you that right now we're still evaluating the rooms that are coming in and the, the requests that are coming in, looking at all of our rates. Uh, we'll come back to you at a future time if there's any other questions, if you want to look at changing your rates, but we just want you to know that as everything is coming in, we're still evaluating everything. Are most of your requests from folks in Indian Trail or outside of Indian Trail? I think everything so far has been in town because we actually ask them to fill out whether they're residents or non-residents. I don't know that we've had any non-residents so far. Very good. I looked at Mike before. There were some slides that everything I said was on slides. So yeah, I apologize. We seem to have lost a couple of, of slides here. Yeah, that's fine. I'll find them and send them to council tomorrow. Is there uh, any consideration being given to nonprofits. So the rates that we had scheduled so far, there's a resident nonprofit rate lump together, then there's a nonprofit or then there's a profit and non resident rate. Um, it's up to council if they want to make any adjustments, whether that be for different nonprofit rates and, non and resident rates to be you know separated and be different. That's up to you. Um, and that's something like I said, we're evaluating kind of what's been coming in so far and what the perception is Jason, have you grandfathered in groups that were using the Civic Building at no cost, or are you now charging them? What we've done is we've continued zero charge for the three rates or the three uh, organizations we've considered partners. So that would be the Lions Club, the Arts and Social Society, and the Rotary Club. So right now, Rotary meets every Thursday in one of the rooms, as well as the first Tuesday of the month for a board meeting, and they're not charging any rates. And then the Arts and Social Are there any other groups that were renting the Civic Center that, you know, aren't included in these three? There were uh, a couple groups that Girl Scouts were using space as well. Mm -hmm. there, there was not a set time frame like we did have Rotary meetings. They would have occasional meetings on Saturdays. Um, and then there was um, one or two other groups that we actually sent that the CAC was going to be closing and the Civic Center was going to be closing and told us to reach back out if you're going to look for future use and we have not gained information from them. The group that is still interested is the Girl Scout group. And I did communicate with the lady that she was in charge of the Girl Scout uh, group and she did find another place and she told me, Patrick, I am uh, very familiar with, with new buildings and what it costs to keep them up when it comes to trash and cleaning and lighting and all that. So uh, she did not have any issue, uh, you know, not uh, us coming up and saying that there'll be a little fee. Just wanted to add to that. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Jason.
Jason. Brings us to updates. A, solid waste contract savings. Mr. McLam. Saved roughly with doing that contract, this rounded number would be $40,000. In that time, we also increased 263 homes. While also that would increase um, the tonnage of recyclables and solid waste, yard debris, all that kind of stuff. So then we took that a step further. We looked at if we would have selected or council would have selected the waste pro contract for 2017 rather than the GBUSA contract. Even with that contract, we've saved, saved about $12,000 with being with GBUSA. And if you do those numbers completely to what the Waste Pro, Pro old contract would have been, we wouldn't have bid it out at all. We would have just done another two-year renewal and kept going to what the GBUSA contract is today. We've saved almost $67,000 in four months. Wow. Well, again, you've got to remember we've increased Nice. Nice savings. Very nice. Well, a quick question, Adam. Um, how are they doing as far as uh, as far as? So the, uh, obviously, when we first started the contract, we all said there was going to be a few little bumps that we were going to have to go through. We've gotten through those bumps with them. Um, they're doing great right now. We're in bulk pickup. All of the town, you know, in our contract, they guaranteed us four new vehicles. They've all come in now. They're all being used. We're also advertising now on the side of one of the vehicles, Parks and Rec advertised uh, for the last three events for last year. Right now there's an advertisement on the <coughs> side of it for bulk pickup, which we're in right now for the next two weeks, a shredded event, and Christmas tree pickup um, is advertised on the side of the truck right now. As soon as those events are done, so by the end of January, we'll take that off, and Parks and Rec will start advertising for some of their stuff again. And, it, and that's free of charge? So one a year is free of charge, and then after that it's on the town. But is it, from an advertisement standpoint, it cost us a little under $400, and it drives past almost um, 12,801 uh, 12, homes a, a week. So, Not to mention the cars on the road right, and right, everything. And that's just yeah. homes that it's driving past. Yeah. So I mean, from an advertisement standpoint, it's cheap, cheap. It costs us over $800 to advertise one time in the paper. So how, how long a period of time can you have it on that truck? So we put the um, one on the truck for the Christmas events, and it was on there for a month and a half or two months, somewhere about there. When it came off, it, it had a few cuts and scratches on it, but you could still read it. There wasn't an issue with it. The one that's on there now, we've, it'll be on there for about a month, and it'll come down. But we can do it as often as we want. It takes about four hours for them to take one off and put another one on. Is, is, uh, it, is it monthly? That. Is that how the fee works? Is how no, does it? We can, we can ever, whenever we want to do it. Um, it's, it just comes out of whichever budget for whichever department wants to do that advertising on the vehicle for that time. But would it just stay on there then indefinitely? If, if we didn't want to and take it off, would still be put up for $400? The town of Indian Trail. It could stay on there for a year. If that's a year, and it'd still just be 400 bucks. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal there. <laughs> Adam, what is the paper shredding day? So the, I was going to mention that when I was finishing up. Uh, the shredded day is going to be um, on Saturday from 9 to 1. This Saturday? This Saturday. <laughs> we're going to park the shredded truck over in the Carolina Courts parking lot right at the, uh, over in the corner near the dumpster. You can circle through the parking lot. We've checked with Carolina Courts. They do have a small event going on. They're playing basketball in the morning, but we won't, they don't take up nearly all the parking lot, so we'll be fine. We'll circle traffic through. Town residents can throw, you know, their papers in there to get shredded up. Is there a limit on how many boxes you can bring? <laughs> <laughs> For you, maybe. For <laughs> no, we, 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 we did not set a limit. 
because we just don't know. This is the first time we've done it this way. In the past, y'all have done it as it was part of like the Arbor Day Earth Day yeah. event, you know, the big pickup. And at that time, there was a limit. This is the first time we've done it like this. We're going to just kind of play it by ear and see how we go. Good. I'm glad you're having this day. <laughs> and this is limited to the residents of. How do you monitor that? How do you so enforce this time that? We're gonna, we're gonna watch it and see how it goes. We in the future we, we've looked at options of um, using utility bills or using IDs or different things like that. Town of Stallings does this. They do a paper shredded event. They do it only once a year, mm -hmm. and they limit theirs to I think two or three boxes. Um, but they don't check any kind of ID, and they've never had a huge usage to where they couldn't guarantee that people would be able to throw their stuff in there. So we're, we're just, we're going on the good Samaritan system this first time. And they'll shred it right there and then. Right there in front okay. of you. If you want to watch it shred, you can watch it shred. More paranoia. <laughs> Just, just one, one quick thing for council's benefit. I just took a pencil to the, the, the sixty-seven thousand dollars for four months, and this is over the, what we would have paid the waste pipe contract, right? If, if you times that, uh, and I did it, I did it wrong, but it, it's, it's three times uh, sixty-seven, so uh, twenty-one, two, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's over two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, a year uh, savings uh, over what what we were doing before, so uh, that that adds up, and that and what, that was over a four or five year contract. What was that? A four year? Uh, or, waste parts contract was a total of five years. It that was a five year contract. contract and then extended a little bit so if it was a five year contract, it would have been a, a million dollars. It been over a million dollars, a little over a million dollars. Just FYI. Thank you. Okay. Brings us to Patrick, town yes. manager update. Yes, sir. I'll make it quick. Uh, we are going to get back to the two-week two report. Yeah. Also, uh, we're going to we're going to start uh, hitting it hard on drainage. Uh, we did meet with the with the <laughs> consultant, and we're looking at First Avenue right now. The the draft study for. Uh, uh, Beacon Hills, uh, we, we did forward the summary to Ms. Howe. We should be getting the report soon, so that's almost getting done. Uh, resurfacing, we are preparing the resurfacing contract as soon as the weather allow, maybe say April, March, we'll hit it hard. We, we do have a list ready. Indian Trail, uh, this is the downtown project. Uh, we are waiting on CRTPO and North Carolina DOT to tell us that that money is in that program. Immediately, we'll go ahead and hire a surveyor and we'll start the concept. Uh, Crooked Creek Phase 2, uh, we, as uh, Jason mentioned, we, we are uh, done with the ADA. Uh, uh, the Miracle League, we're looking at that right now, and we're going to try to include it uh, as part of second phase, not the funding part, but all, uh, just the location part. Uh, we did receive the cost estimate that I'll be sharing with council from Jason and Katie. Uh, the roundabout, as soon as we meet with DOT, which it should be soon, we are going to discuss the bypass, which is not shutting down the entire intersection because that's going to be a big impact on the town. We do have the four contracts that we did last year, and they were very successful, 25000 apiece, which is the raised markers, patching, crack pouring, and, uh, and uh, uh, missing patching. So it's, it's, a, it's a good time to go ahead and do some of that when the traffic is not that heavy during the day. Uh, the day. And we are going to conduct a sign inventory uh, survey that Adam will be doing, him and his folks. What it does, it helps us go out there and determine all the signs that do not meet the retro-reflectivity mandate that was done by the president uh, uh, about four years ago. So if we, when we get that survey, we'll turn the GIS drawings to North Carolina DOT, 
because most of the signs uh, exist on their roadways and they'll be responsible of coming in and replacing those so don't, we don't have to do them at our cost. So that's a program that many municip municipalities do, especially when you have a lot of roadways that they are two lanes. Uh, I think I covered most of the projects uh, that, that we're going to hit hard and I'm glad that the committee members are on board right now so they could advise on the storm drainage, the transportation, public safety, parking, it, it just happened at the right time and we're, we're very pleased with that. Uh, by that I conclude my report, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. <coughs> Council, uh, during discussion item A, board and committee member appointments, I've been reminded you're supposed to make a council appointment too to each of those committees. If we could circle back and go back over that, please. Mr. Morse, I'm going to yield the floor to you to handle this item. Excuse me, let me turn this back on. Council members. Council representation for each yeah. committee. Um, do you have that mic? I've got it. <clears throat> and okay. Can, uh, let Is it okay if Mike I'm, handles it, Terry? It's fine. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Head. And, and just so that everybody will know uh, what we're doing is that um, what we decided is is that we're going to have, um, in some cases, um, as many as two members that will be assigned to uh, the different committees. Um, that way, we have a lot of interaction between all the committees and ourselves. And we just think it, it, the, uh, the town will function um, much more efficiently and, and better this way. So um, the first one is the ABC board. And um, we initially have um, Mr. Cohn and Ms. Howe. Uh, Ms. Howe will be stepping down in the next couple of months and I will be taking her slot. Under Parks and Rec, we have uh, Mr. Cohn and Mr. Keesler, stormwater is Mrs. Howe. Now, do we need to vote on these, or we vote on these? No. Just, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, stormwater is Mrs. Howe. Planning board. We're going to do something different with planning board. Um, the, so there's basically 12 meetings per year on the planning board, and what we'll do is that each um, two members will be assigned for every meeting. Um, and hopefully that both of them can get there, but at least one will get there. Uh, and that, you know, that's simply because of the, the, um, the importance of the planning board. Um, board of Adjustments is Ms. Howe and Keesler. Did you, did you say the planning board who was on it? Uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate. Uh, so each one of us will take, um, there's 12 meetings, so there's two of us that will take um, one of those meetings every, every month, and we'll just rotate that. So the most you'll have is um, two meetings during this time frame, and then, um, well, not the most, but the, so that would leave us with two more, if that makes sense. Uh, does that make sense? That, that, so we have two board members. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I didn't know if you wanted to put one person dedicated to it and then rotate out or I, I didn't know if you wanted to have a name attached to it that's, or not. That's how, I mean, this, this is our, how we want it set up. So Are you volunteering? I was. Awesome. All right. I, I was actually going to volunteer the planning board rather than board of adjustments for myself. Okay. We're fine. I'm right. sure we're fine with that. That'd be great. And then, then we, you know, um, as, um, that gives us four of us that will will attend, you know, three meetings apiece. Basically. Okay. Perfect. Well, um, I didn't see transportation uh, on here. Yep. That, um, I was getting to that. Transportation oh. is uh, Mr. Morris and myself and crypto um, to keep the uh, consistency there or will be the same too, Mr. Morris and myself. I think that covers everything. Public right. safety? Public safety, there was no one that signed up for that. If somebody wants to take public safety, we can do that or we can, we can share it. Um, uh, looks like the mayor, would you 
Well, to take. Um, yeah, you're all going to be busy every day. You freed me up. I can do that. <laughs> we'll and if you can't do it, just call somebody. Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll it all, shouldn't. We'll all do it. It and shouldn't be. It shouldn't be much of an to, issue. Shouldn't try to be there. I, my particular yeah, there, problem is I'm not always here, so I'm yeah. not in town. So no, that, public safety is not going to be. Meetings here are not going to be an issue. Can I clarify, uh, Councilmember Keesler? You said you wanted to be Planning Board instead of Board of Adjustments. Right. So should I take you off Board of Adjustments, as originally yes. stated? Yes. Thank you. So that leaves Councilmember Howe. Correct. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you need company, I'll come up here and sit with you. Okay. Well, <laughs> keep you company. In in regard to the CRTPO, I contacted Bob Cook and made the change. Council Member Morris will be the lead, and Council Member Head will be the substitute. Mr. Seder, can I make a comment? Yes, sir. Please? Would you put a notice on our website, sort of a permanent notice during committee board meetings? There may be a quorum of council members at any of our committee meetings, but no town business will be voted upon now in accordance with those postings. Yeah since there'll be two there, if a third or myself drop by to one, we don't want to create any issues. Got it. Have it an ongoing posting, please. Ms. Howe? Um, there's another thing I think we were supposed to talk about was the county commissioner meetings, that we would be attending those too. Right. And um, if, if the uh, clerk would please make a list of the nights of the days, like every other Wednesday, whatever uh, committee you're on, so we have a list and know if we have to go where we have to go. Um, Karen, did you want to um, make a comment? <laughs> yeah, we just need to be very careful about um, a quorum attending any of these meetings, and so I think you all need to communicate that only two of you at any one time would be there. That just throws into the, the, the open meeting Pro, um, policies as well as um, you know any activity that's taken by at, at, at any of those meetings. I would just I would just say please speak with each other. Make sure only two people show up unless it is noticed as a town council meeting. Okay. Um, so to that end, what we would say then is, uh, as they are assigned, if anyone wants to attend, you know, I guess we need to go through staff. Staff. Yep to coordinate for it. Correct. Okay. We had asked for a list of the bylaws uh, for each committee, and there is one, which is the stormwater. Uh, the the uh, chairperson has to be an elected official, and I had been with that since the inception, and we worked along with Stallings, so that's why I got that one. But uh, that's the only one that requires uh, an elected official. And again, if we get a list of all the committees and what, you know, like I know, just like the town council meetings, the second and fourth uh, meeting of the, of the month, so. I'll set a schedule of meetings with your names beside it. Oh, that would be great. And, and I, I guess we need to figure out how we're going to do the Union County um, Commissioner meetings. I think they. They meet on Mondays. On Mondays, yes. right. I think it's what, the first and third, I believe? Yeah, uh, next Monday, yes. Uh, my two cents into this, just for council's benefit, I, while I have attended meetings in the past of the uh, different committees, just uh, I hope I don't overstep my boundaries. I just want to let everybody know that Shirley basically is the only one, if she's on the uh, uh, board of storm, excuse me, uh, stormwater, that really is active in, in the committee uh in, in the goings on of the committee, yeah. we're just there as spectators and, and, right. and not as a person that leads or, or, or are there. We're there if they've got just questions. Or, yeah, if they've got questions yeah. for us, they're more than free to ask questions, but we're, of course, not there to, to lead the meeting or, or anything like that. So, anyway. Uh, we also discussed about um, public comments, uh, whether it would be necessary for uh, council members to sign up for public comments. Um, during that time, I think we decided that, you know, um, that, that we would not need that, that, you know, uh, and I, I don't see us doing that that often, but, you know, that was one of the recommendations. Um, any discussion there? Um, I don't ever remember talking about it, to be honest with you, but you might have. I just, I just, I, I don't. I received that email. 
I, I received an email. It was an email, maybe yeah. I didn't see it. Right. Okay. If I could, it may be that these these um, assignments to the standing committees of the town, y'all are the actually just the council liaison. Um, that's your position. So you're sort of a spectator and a resource um, for those committees, the park board and the other ones that you're that you're watching and, and responding to. Sort of, you are the liaison between that committee and the town council, mm -hmm. and that might be a better way to right. that be, maybe to call yourself a liaison rather than a member of the committee. Okay. Okay. Aaron. Can we add that wording to each of the committee bylaws that there'll be a two council members assigned as liaisons to each committee as, um, as yeah. a resource point? Um, you know you what? I've not even reviewed these, the bylaws for most of the committees. So um, it's probably, we'll t how about we take a look? Is it okay if I take a look and get back to you with a better answer for that at the next meeting? Or? Okay, perfect. If it's okay with council. I have a comment for council, mayor, if you will, the town manager. May I speak? Yes. Um, on the stormwater committee, can council also look to see if Ms. Howe needs to be a member in order to be the chair? Um, we have currently have no open positions except for alternate positions. Um, yeah, I'll look into that as well. Thank you. But if it's a man, yeah. And who's now the chair? Um, couldn't be the chair again because you have to have an elected official. That's what they're checking into to see if that's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. That, that is true, Councilmember okay. Howell. Okay. Uh, I'm happy this council is getting involved with everything, but you're leaving out one very important body, and that's the Board of Education. We should be observing that and knowing what's going on, what their needs are from a countywide standpoint. And if it's okay with the council, I'll volunteer to go to their meetings. That would be great. Yeah. Since I go every now and then, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Mind if I circle back to the public comments? Comments. Sure. Or, um, can you clue me in? What's what's that about? What, what's? Well, I, it, you know, the, there was just discussion that you know, if if something came up that that uh, we as a council member wanted to speak and didn't hadn't signed up for public comments, how would that happen? So, you know. It, in the past, if I might I say, well, I can go on experience. If in the past, if that's ever happened, the council person has asked permission mm -hmm. to the council right. if they may get up and speak, which is I, I probably yeah. think is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and that way, just in case you had an abuser that, that, that wanted to do it every, and I'm not, I'm not saying anybody here would be an abuser, but let's say I became an abuser and, and want, wanted to do it every, every time. So, and that way you could say, no, I don't want to hear you. You know, we, we, we heard you last time. So, uh, but anyway, how about, we'll just, we'll Thanks count for the council can that always be, just ask. Can make right. that decision. Yeah. Be respectful. Okay, if that's all, thank you. Um, give me. Mayor, may I clarify one more point, yes. please? Yes. Um, council Member Howe, you mentioned that the county commissioner's meeting is a Monday meeting. How am I to schedule council members for that meeting? Is everyone going or just We'll rotating? work through that. They'll get back to you on that yes, once sir. they have the dates, right? Who's going to attend on a round robin? We'll probably check with each other. I mean, yeah. Is Thank you. Okay. That brings us to council comments. Councilman Keister, Keesler, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when it gets late. Not the first time it's happened. <laughs> well. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground tonight. It's been a good meeting. Uh, I know that our first meeting was more of a, a, a kind of break-in pageantry, you know, this is the first one that I feel like we've actually uh, done some work on. And um, there's been a lot of background work done prior to getting here. So uh, somebody told me that you, you put a lot of hours in. Well, you do, you do, because you're reading a lot of material before you even walk through these doors. 
And uh, that leads to the staff again. Thanks for all the support and the information that you make sure we have so that we can make educated decisions on these things that we're making, you know, we're having to decide on. So I want to thank you all again for that very much. And, and we had a nice turnout tonight. Thank you for all the citizens that have showed up tonight. Um, we need to use the place. It's a nice place. And we appreciate, appreciate you all being here tonight. Thank you. I'm not trying to cut anybody out, but I got to go to the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman I Cohn. I, I, I don't want to be rude, but you know, I just want to thank everybody for, for coming tonight, and uh, thank all the, the the people for uh, the board that are applying for all the board positions. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time uh, to the town, and thank you guys for for coming out. And happy New Year to everybody. And uh, we're going to make this a, a good council. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna be great. And uh, please come back, all of you. Thank you. Mr. Morris. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to be your council person representing you guys. Um, as Monty said, we, there's been a lot going on in the short time that we've been on council, a lot of working behind the scenes, calling each other. Uh, I know that uh, I've been on the phone with these ladies and gentlemen for um, <laughs> countless hours. And uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Sadik for always having an open door for whenever, whenever I've had any questions, because I've had a lot of them. Uh, we're getting a lot of emails from the constituents, and we're trying to address those, or I am. Um, some folks have some, a lot of good thoughts and um, want to see some things brought forward to council, and that will happen. There are, um, but please realize that we, you know, if we, if I bring everything that I have been emailed to talk about, we'd be here till midnight, you know, in the, in the first meeting. But um, I, I don't want to, um, I don't want anyone to to not send that. We will get to it, especially myself. If so, if you have any comments about the trash situation, I see a lot of that on Facebook, uh, where some folks are not happy with our service then um, I, I really do welcome your, your emails and your phone calls. I, as of yesterday, I finally got my town phone. Um, I'll make that information public so people want to reach out to me. And thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Mr. Head. Um, thanks to the staff. Thanks for everyone attending. Um, as you notice, we still have a couple of open positions on some of these committees. We'd like to fill them all, so uh, uh, you know if you care to, to join, please do so and ask your friends. Um, this is um, we want everybody to be a part of, of this. And uh, uh, the other thing that I just want to bring up is we've we've talked about everything we're doing, and and we're just getting started in our orientation. Um, there's more to come. Um, I'm uh, actually going to. Um, ethics training um, Thursday and Friday and the rest of the uh, the, the council we will be going in a couple of weeks so there's there's a lot of things moving and and we appreciate uh, again everybody attending staff does a great job and everybody <coughs> have a good night Mayor Alvarez thank you everyone for coming um, today's the day we celebrate our law enforcement, so let's just continue that and let's celebrate them every day of the year. When you see them, thank them. If you get the opportunity, buy them coffee or lunch. They don't hesitate to put their life on the line for you, so always remember that. Staff doing an outstanding job. I hope you're enjoying your new office. I most certainly stood away during the cold because it was freezing out there. I appreciate the uh, synergy of the new council. My blood pressure is a lot lower today. Um, keep, up the, keep, up the, <laughs> keep up the good work. Thanks, Patrick, for everything you do. Um, I'm real excited about the accessible playground. Jason, you and your team, great job. It's many years overdue. And I'd like, uh, hope that you each can personally and spread the word for those young ladies that came in for the student of the year and their cause. They're good students. I've worked with them before. And uh, it's up to us to encourage our youth to become better adults. 
So here's an opportunity on a small scale. Thank you, everyone, for coming. God bless you all. And Ms. Howe. Well, I feel real mellow right now. <laughs> this is the end of the meeting, and my blood pressure is not up either. So that's good. Again, thanks to the staff for all you do. Um, you got some very neat people sitting over there. Uh, Miss Katie is um, uh, usually in trouble, I, I believe. I found out a few things about a couple of you, so, and, and your boss did not tell me about it. It's, yeah. <laughs> But thanks everybody for coming. Um, it's uh, it, we, we did. We got a lot of work done. I can see the respect, and it's going to stay that way. Or somebody's going to get some rosaries to say here pretty <laughs> soon. But really, we get along, and um, I, the stress is gone. We have a good relationship with the employees and uh, with the time manager, and we appreciate and our and our lawyer over there. She's a she's a tough lady. Uh, I had a little conversation with her today. <laughs> She went to Iceland. She's, I'm telling them what she did. <laughs> and I think that's amazing. She went with some friends. Uh, I would. That's one place I'd like to go to. I want to thank everybody on the council here working along with me or helping me. or We're, we're, we're all doing whatever we can do to make things work. And, and we're taking the town in consideration, and that's what we're all here for. So, again, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. yep. I so. Okay, at this time we have a closed session. Oh. In accordance with NCGS 143-318-1183, consult with attorney to protect attorney-client privilege, and NCGS 143-318-1185 to establish or instruct the staff or agent concerning the negotiation of the price and terms of the contract. Mm -hmm. Price and terms of the contract. I need a motion to go into closed session. So Mike, move. Mr. Heads made the motion. All in favor? Not that you have a choice. Approved. Oh, no, yeah. I need a motion to come out of closed session. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. All in favor? You, you Aye. 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 I need David a motion to adjourn. Motion. I got a motion to adjourn. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. All in favor? Okay. Aye. So. Aye. We just